Yo. Nice and easy. We're done with that though. He's in the jump rope. Yeah. Whenever I skip rope, I can't use these wireless headphones. They fall right out of my ears. So of course, it would be helpful if I could get the rope itself not to fall out of my hands. Finish my protein shake, and then we'll hit this. New name, who this? Yes, sir. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Bull Muscle. For those of you who know me as Beer Battered Ag, yes, I'm going through a rebrand. This seems like a pretty good time to talk about that, so let's go ahead and talk about it. I am a diehard Aggie. The eyes of Texas are upon you. That is the song they sing so well. Sounds like hell! So goodbye to Texas University. We're gonna beat you all to Chigaroo the Rim, Chigaroo the Rim, Rock Tough Wheel Stuff, Texas A&M. Goodbye. We get a little bit more all. So why can't I click all? Oh, yeah, there it goes. Nice. Alright, let's do one more bronze bar. If you adopt the mindset, and this is a quote from Jacob Fisker of Early Retirement Extreme, if you know that guy, 10 points to you. But it's a, it's, it's a quote that I find unbelievably uh, poignant in today's era. Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. I'm gonna repeat that. Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. That's painful. But yes, my friends, pure protein, as near as makes no difference. From raw egg whites. It's disgusting, um, the taste is vile, and it smells, but 100 yeah, my poor roommate has to deal with the farts that come from this, and as you might imagine, they're not ple they're not pleasant. But let me all right, let me go ahead and walk, knock this bed. Good morning, everyone. Welcome on in. How are we doing today? So, welcome to Saturday. Today, uh, normally we would have either a push, a pull, or a leg workout. However. Uh, due to unexpected circumstances regarding us being out of town last, like me being out of town last week, and uh, as a result, my schedule being a bit wonky, and I'm trying to catch up on some both broadcasts and some lifts that I haven't done. Today is actually the fourth day in a row I've streamed. So usually, what I will do is a push day, a pull day, a leg day. Uh, or some order of those three, and then a rest day. But normally Sunday is my rest day. So instead, uh, I thought I would change gears a little bit and do a, uh, do a little, a little hit workout today. Which isn't something I get to do very often on my streams, uh, but it's something I probably should work at a bit more. So uh, that's what we're going to start with. So I've got a little plan for the HIIT workout. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to do intervals. So we're going to do a minute on the jump rope, a minute of kettlebell swings, and then a minute of full body press. Uh, that's going to be pretty tough. And then I'm probably going to do a minute of rest in between each. So that'll be four minutes per round, uh, or sorry, three minutes per round and one minute of rest, so effectively four minutes. Uh, and I think I'm going to do five rounds of that. So that'll be 20 minutes busting ass pretty hard. And then after that, we'll probably relax a little, maybe do some abs, uh, and do our Q&A. And uh, maybe I'll read a little bit from the Super Squats uh, book. The other thing I meant to do uh, but did not end up getting to was uh, installing the heavy bag. You can see it is not currently up there. It's currently still sitting here on my workbench. And the main reason is because I think I need to find a drill that can uh, bore in a pilot hole for these uh, fasteners. I think the way this works is it's got little four little mounting tabs uh, on the sides of the on the sides of the or on the top and the bottom rather of the wall bag, and so 
I'm not quite sure exactly how to mount it. I think the way it goes is you bore these in and then uh, you mount it with, you know, with these washers and you lock it down with the nut. But I don't necessarily know. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure how this is supposed to go in because it's a flat end. So clearly, you know, I'm gonna have to drill. I'm gonna have to drill a pilot hole in first. It's the only thing I can think of. Um, yeah. So a anyway, uh, that's. I'm, I'm not quite sure how exactly to drill this in. So I'm gonna probably talk with somebody who knows a little bit more about carpentry. Uh, if any of y'all know exactly how to operate one of these, uh, how to how to bore this into a wall. Uh, please let me know. So yeah, all right. Um, we'll get started. We'll start just warming up a few jumping jacks. Since we're gonna be doing jump rope as an integral part of the actual hit workout, there's no need to warm up with jump ropes. So we'll go ahead and just oh, get started. Do jumping jacks. You know what I need to do? I was thinking about this the other day. I need to get myself a, uh, a couple more pairs of white gym shorts, because I've only got one. I know a lot of y'all would rather wear lighter colors in here. And to be honest, they're better for uh, repelling mosquitoes anyway. So I should probably look to get a few more. kind of makes me happy. Uh, what that tells me is that I really pushed it hard on Wednesday. They're not super sore like they were yesterday, but like if I, oh, if I go down in a squat, I'm definitely feeling it. So a pretty good sign. All right. So we'll get started with our little workout here. So how are we going to do this? I guess the way I should do it, you know what I'm going to do? Looks like an anchor bolt for concrete. It expands as you tighten it. Hey, Sir Snapple, thank you very much for telling me. So it's a bolt for concrete. Hey, Bang Buds, thank you very much for the raid. I appreciate that. Love having an early uh, early stream raid. That's not common. Welcome on in, everybody. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Bang Buds. We'll go ahead and give you a shout out here. Let's do that. Bang. Buds. What were you streaming there, Bang Buds? See now, what's interesting is I'm right. I've got drywalls and studs, so I'm not thinking. I hope I can still use this with a pilot hole, you know, into wood. The idea here is that I was gonna use a stud finder there, which I have. Find the studs and then uh, send them there. Welcome on in there, Bang Buds. Um, I'll go ahead and give you a follow while I'm here. There you go. Enjoy my follow. Uh, always, always follow new raiders. Uh, so, what, what were you, uh, what were you streaming? Welcome. So, for uh, all of you raiders, I hope you stick around. My name is Bull Muscle. I am a Twitch fitness and health streamer. And normally, uh, what I do is lifting. Uh, I normally do either a push pull leg split, but today we're actually doing a hit workout, which is a bit unusual. So, uh, bear with me. We'll, uh, we'll have some fun. So the first thing I need to do is set up my weights. So I already went over what workout we're gonna go with. I actually think I'm gonna make one modification to the, I'm gonna go to, I think what I'm gonna do is, there we go. I'm gonna do one minute for each of these exercises and then 20 seconds in between to transition. So it'll be, one minute on, 20 seconds off, one minute on, 20 seconds off, one minute on, 20 seconds off, and then one minute rest. Uh, get that heartbeat going. Not sure how well it would work. Never used it in wood before. Use like a lag bolt or screw, typically something with threads. See, that's what I'm thinking, right? Like I, this, I can see how this would work with concrete, but 
my walls are not concrete, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure if this is the right hardware I should use or not. But it's what came with the wall bag, so I'm going to have to look at that up. That will look as good as you uh, one day. Well, I appreciate that, Nanny Plum. Thank you for the first time chat. By the way, if you all like what I do, please hit that follow button. It, every follower uh, matters. You know, we're continuing to grow. We're at about just a touch under 1,400 subscribers right now. Uh, the goal is going to be to get to... Uh, you know, the goal, I think, is going to be to get to 2,000 by the end of the year. I think we can get there. I don't think that's an outrageous target. There we go. On. This is 145 pounds, which is not a ton of weight, but for a full body press, uh, especially after doing two previous hip exercises right beforehand, and a circuit, it needn't be. Take that if you want now. Just place it, I think, here. We got our belt. So, yeah, it's going to be one minute on, 20 seconds off. Uh, one minute on, 20 seconds off, one minute on, uh, one minute and 20 seconds off, I guess I should say. Yeah. There's going to be three sets on, three sets off. Okay. Uh, what do your weights go up to? Um, 2K, you got that? Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Bang Buds. Um, I'd like to think so. JT Hudson, too. Thank you for being, uh, you, Bang Buds, and uh, Nanny Plum, thank you for being three more on the way. Uh, just finished a night shift, 14 hours to keep. Give my chat some love before I go to sleep before or for work tonight. Hey, get that rest, man. Uh, you're never going to get gains if you're uh, constantly sleep deprived. So definitely go get, go get yourself some sleep. You, you have a good night. Take care. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? What do your weights go up to? So my plates, uh, my plates, the standard, it's just a standard Olympic plate, which is in the United States, 25, uh, or sorry, 45 pounds. That's equivalent to just a tick over 20 kilograms. Uh, the max weight I can put on my bar, I think I might have done this at one point. No, I don't think I've quite done this. Uh, is My bar is 35 because it's cheap. Uh, 125, 215, 305, 405, 435, 455, 465, I can put up to 470 pounds on my bar. I've never done that. Uh, the most I've ever done is a, oh, excuse me. Uh, the most I've ever done is a 435 pound deadlift. And that, that's a PR for me. And we're not going to be doing that today. All right. What we will do though, is we will move those over because we're going to have to have the kettlebell. Okay. Let's see how we're going to do. We're gonna start with jump rope. We'll get the jump rope. We'll be a minute on the jump rope. It'll be uh, minute on the jump rope. Twenty seconds rest. Actually, no, I, I got it. Minute on the jump rope. Thirty seconds rest. Minute on the kettlebells. Thirty seconds rest. Minute on full body press. Uh, one minute rest. So that should be perfect. What's up? Um, um, I'm heading up the Walgreens. What for? Uh, medication that probably too sensitive to talk about on it. Say no more. Yep. Say it. Do you need anything? No. All right. Um, do you prefer working out at home over traveling to a gym? There's pros and cons. Uh, the best part about working out at home, and okay, so what's nice for me is I have the best of both worlds. I actually work out at a nuclear site. There's a gym on site. So on Mondays and, well, when I'm not playing Ultimate, it's currently Ultimate Frisbee season, so... Um, uh, when it's not ultimate frisbee season, I, uh, will also work out there on Tuesdays. Those are usually, uh, where I work out at the, the site gym. And then, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm working out in here. So the pros of working out in here are that I never have to wait on equipment, uh, and that I can stream to you guys. That's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing that. Um, the benefits of uh, 
Sorry about that. Um, hey, Capro, good to see you. Good morning. So uh, let me. So the benefits of working out in the in a gym together, uh, and the kind of the cons of working out at home is that I like socializing with other people who are sort of fitness minded, and so the. Um, the times I get to work out at the site gym kind of allows me to talk to some of the other guys who are at my workplace that enjoy weightlifting, so it's kind of nice. Uh, gamer Music Kid, you you didn't even follow me and you're asking me to follow you? That's incredibly rude. Okay, so if you're saying you're really new, let me explain a little something about Twitch etiquette. Begging people to follow you is like the surefire way to make sure people don't follow. So um, try better tactics. If you want me to follow you, if you want to you know, integrate yourself into my community, that's one thing. But just randomly showing up to someone's stream for the first time, asking, yeah, bro, follow me is your first time chat ever? No, I'm not gonna do that. I don't even know who you are. Why would I, why would I do that? Think before you speak, people. So, uh, gamer music kid, if you're interested in actually becoming part of this, you know, a part of this community, and then stick around, then yeah, I'll follow you. Um, but not, not, not just off the bat. If just telling me, uh, Sir Snapple, thank you very much for the follow. Okay, so uh, welcome to everybody who came in. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just one more time explain who I am, what I'm doing, and what this stream is. My name is Bull Muscle. I'm a fitness and health streamer. I also talk about uh, finances, um, rest days. I've been starting to do uh, RuneScape uh, as a fun little gaming stream. It's not something I do a ton, but that's more a good nostalgia trip for me, so I, I enjoy it. Uh, as far as what we're doing today, this is a bit of an unorthodox workout. It's a little bit of hit. So the way this is gonna work is uh, one minute jump rope, 30 seconds rest, one minute uh, kettlebell swings, 30 seconds rest, one minute uh, full body press, one minute rest. So that's gonna be five minutes. We're gonna do that. We'll see how many sets I end up doing it for, but I'd like it to be five minutes, so, or five sets. How many gyms have 25 kilograms in America? Uh, not many, we don't, very few parts of the United States use the uh, SI, which is you know, Systems International. Uh, as an engineer, I will say I prefer the metric system or again, SI, uh, but unfortunately, that's not what is sold here in the United States. Everything's sold in old you know, pounds units, old you know, imperial units. It's dumb, but it is what it is. And, Frankly, I've just gotten pretty good at converting Imperial to metric and like, for instance, okay, so my PRs, if you guys were wondering, uh, PR for bench press is 355 pounds. That's roughly 164 kilograms. Squat PR is 405 pounds. That's roughly 184 kilograms. No, sorry, 100 and I think 80, no, it's 184. And then Deadlift is 435, which is 197 kilograms, I believe. Imperial is metric. Oh, no, dude, the metric system's better. Uh, look, ask any scientist or engineer, and they will almost exclusively tell you, uh, even in the United States, that the, the inch pound system sucks. The inch pound system does have some benefits when it comes to carpentry because uh, it's easier to divide things into like 12 is a much easier number to work with in terms of like feet to inches uh, than uh, centimeters are, but I'd still rather use centimeters. Uh, Sir Schnepple, no common courtesy nowadays. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the downsides of the internet. It doesn't outweigh, you know, all the great upsides. The fact that I'm able to do this at all is kind of one of those upsides. By the way, I saw that we had more than 15 people in chat at one point from the raids, uh, which I'm very grateful for. That means at the end of this workout, y'all get to see me chug eight ounces of raw egg whites. There are those Imperial units again. That's uh, about 0 0.25 liters or 250 milliliters, I guess is where you're going. 
we define the U.S. imperial system is yeah, it is defined in terms of metric. That is that is true. It's funny. Okay, so uh, this is my one last story, and then I promise I will actually start uh, hitting the weights. Uh, the U.S. actually was very much in favor of going metric as far back as the early 1800s under Jefferson and Madison. And funny enough, uh, when, you know, the French, it was the French that originally, you know, came up with SI, uh, many American founding fathers thought it was a very good idea and they wanted to implement it in the United States. So they, we asked for some weights from the French. Uh, and the ship that was carrying them over to the United States got hijacked by British pirates. So the British, uh, more or less, are the reason we don't use metric. Uh, so you can blame, I believe they call him Perfidious Albion for that. But yeah, the, uh, the original, we, we almost went metric in the United States as far back as the early 1800s. Um, we tried again in the 1970s, and one of many of the stupid things that the Reagan administration did was completely backtrack on that effort. I may not be far left, but I also don't think Ronald Reagan was a good president. Okay, so, um, any, before I get started, uh, do we have any questions before uh, I get going on these uh, circuits? Because the next 25 minutes or so, I'm going to be moving pretty quickly. I'm not going to be quite as uh, laser focused on chat. There we go. Um, I was thinking about throwing on music, but I always feel like my jump rope, uh, my jump rope always comes out of my hand, or my jump, or my uh, headphones always come out of my hand whenever I do these, so. Need to find a good breakfast for cutting, I always skip it. Um, I very seldom eat breakfast. When I do, it's almost always leftovers from last night's dinner. Nanny Plum, we can absolutely, uh, I can absolutely talk to you about dieting on that one. But I think that's uh, a longer conversation that I'm going to want to hold after uh, I do this. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, five minutes on the clock. Ready, one. take this off my wrist so I can actually see what the time is. There we go. Veritasium, good to know. All right. Next up, kettlebell swings for a minute. Here we go. This is a uh, 55 pound kettlebell. That's roughly 25 kilograms. All 
All right, 30 seconds rest, get this on. Is this just for cardio? Something like that. Pretty much. Oh, there we go. 30 seconds. A bit ambitious. I have to take uh, a little bit of weight off. Go down to 125 here, I think. That's first set done. Yeah. I don't run music on my streams because I've seen too many people get copyrighted by it. You know what? You guys are here for a change. Oh, all right. All right, that's round one done. Round two. What's up, John? Begin. One down, four to go. Follow Suavecito. All right, 10 seconds. So the key here, kettlebell swings, is to use your hip hinge motion. Your arms are pretty relaxed. Right, so your hips are doing the majority of the motion here. Thrust out your hips.
that's a minute. 30 seconds rest. Yeah, there you go. Those are full body presses. The cleanest part of them. All right, 30 seconds. Two sets down, three to go. Long way. That's an athlete's exercise. It's not easy. All right, five, four, three. All right, here we go. Next set. Manny Plum, I'll talk to you about diet after I'm finished this. We're about halfway through. Five, four, and up. Rest. 
15 seconds. Almost go, 10 seconds. Five, three, begin. Three sets down, two to go. I promise I'll catch up with chat in 10 minutes. I stand, need more oxygen. You can turn the fan on a bit more. Workout when you're in pain from your worst last workout. Yes, but not the same muscles. Fifteen seconds. All right, three rounds down. Two to go. One, two, three, start. Now I'm already drenched in sweat. That hot summer humid air. It depends on how much pain. So uh, I can give you more details on that after I'm finished here. Uh, got about eight minutes left. There's a limit to how much I can talk right now. Three, two, one. Thirty seconds. Yeah, it really depends on what workouts you're doing, 
how intensely you've gone. Okay, see we have 30 people in the chat for the first time. It means you all have earned handstand push-ups after when I'm working out in here. Congratulations. Hard work. Give some motivation, some hype, y'all. This is hard. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can tell. I am absolutely soaked. I am sweating bullets. 30 seconds. Please, give me some motivation, y'all. Keep me motivated. Here we go, five minutes on the clock, starting now.
All right, I need music. Pause that. Right. Thirty seconds rest. Come on. We can fly now. Give yourself a few extra seconds for us so you play this. Let's play go. Fly now, bye. We did it. Five sets. Cat bro, I actually might be doing it tonight. We were gonna do it yesterday, but I made this giant Mexican meal for lunch. I made so much we just had leftovers for dinner. I got burgers. And also, that's not barbecuing, you damn Yankee. Grilling and barbecuing are not the same thing. I love you, Capro, but nah. Barbecue is low and slow on a smoker. Grilling is burgers and hot dogs. And you can, you can get away with that difference up north. You can't down south. We take barbecue a lot more seriously in the south. I don't barbecue because I don't have a smoker. All right. That was great. That was a really good workout. And I'm pretty intent, I'm pretty uh, content with that for the main section of this workout. So what are we gonna do next? I think we're gonna do some abs, and then uh, I think I might read a little bit of super squats to you. But first, we need to clean up. Cutest himbo on Twitch. Thank you very much for that Jojo Bo. Welcome, thanks for the first time chat. Hopefully you enjoyed what I got going on here. Hopefully you enjoyed the mohawk and the shamans and everything else. If you do, hit that follow button. It work. So that was 25, 30 minutes, and I'm working a lot harder than I normally do. So you all have our handstand push-ups. We'll do that when we go back inside. Uh, in the meantime, oh. there we go. Grab a Back on the way 
Dreen. I'm really glad I don't really have a locale identity. Yeah. Um, so with barbecue, you know what this deck's talking about. Barbecue is something a lot of countries do around the world, but in the United States, barbecue is almost exclusively the domain of the South. The exception to this is Kansas City. Many states north of the Mason Dixon that claim they can barbecue like the South are lying. The only way you'll get good barbecue in the north is if a southerner has moved up there. Now, I would argue that among the land of the barbecue, you have There we go. Four distinct styles of American barbecue. Hey, you need Nanny Plum. Yes, we can talk about uh, anything you'd like right now. See you later soon. All right. Always good to see you, John Deeds. Hey, TWTWSS, welcome on in. Thanks for the first time chat. And thank you for the five bits, John Deeds. Low and slow is only good for meats that are full of cartilage. That's also untrue. Um, you can low and slow pork shoulder and it turns out wonderful. That's the entire concept of a pig pick, uh, which is a subtype of barbecue. Now, the four main schools of American barbecue are as follows. Kansas City School, the Texas School, the Memphis School, and the Carolina School. Uh, Alabama claims that it barbecues chicken and mayonnaise. I would call that an abomination. Um, Alabama, you do things very well, like football, but clearly, uh, and, and even you guys know how to do ribs correctly in the Memphis style way, a la Dreamland. Uh, I'm done with the hit. Yes, that, that's it. We're, we're done with the worst of it <laughs> anyway, uh, or the best of it, depending on how you, how you subset it. Uh, but TW, welcome to the chat. I always love having first time chatters, but within the subsets, you know, Kansas City, you got burnt ends, Memphis, you got mostly ribs. Carolina's focus on pulled pork. The three main subsets of that are Eastern Carolina vinegar sauce, Western Carolina tomato-based sauce, and my personal favorite of the three in Carolina, South Carolina mustard-based sauce. Uh, the best of them all uh, is uh, brisket, which is the Texas style. The big difference between Texas and the other barbecue styles in the South of the United States is that Texas predominantly focuses on beef whereas the other three predominantly focus on pork. Barbecue chicken uh, is a thing, and it is quite tasty, uh, but usually chicken is almost sort of the sideshow. Uh, Alabama residents, if any of you are in here and you want me to try chicken and white sauce again, I will give it uh, a shot, but I, I certainly, the examples I've had, frankly, have not been very good. Now granted, the examples I've had have not been in Alabama, so I can't fully judge. Uh, I prefer ribs over brisket. I'm a brisket man myself. Uh, I once was a rib, mon a rib man uh, the, of, of the Memphis variety. Uh, or, or really it's Tennessee because Nashville does them very well as well as Knoxville. One of the best, I think the best ribs I've ever had actually was from a, uh, a dude in a, uh, a dude in a Vols, a huge Vols fan who was from Knoxville. Had his own smoker and smoked up some ribs and they were fantastic. Generally speaking, the difference between Tennessee-style barbecue and Carolina-style barbecue is that Carolina-style focuses heavily on uh, the pig pick, but even within the pig pick, it's the prized meat is the pork shoulder because one can pull it to make pulled pork, uh, which is a shredded type of pork sandwich, and uh, it's very good. Have I ever had Snow's barbecue? You're talking about Snow's in Lexington, Texas? Mmm. Okay, cat bro. The fact that you're talking to me about snows means that you are more educated than 90% of all Yankees about the topic. Well, those are, and then Kansas City generally, Kansas City tends to be a sweeter sauce, not overly dissimilar uh, from North Carolina tomato based, however, or even Memphis based sauce or Tennessee based sauce, but. Uh, Kansas City tends to focus on the burn ends, which are very good, but uh, extremely unhealthy for you. Cute Simbo on Twitch. Thank you very much, Jabo, Jajo. Slug Missile. Sorry about not answering this question very 
uh, completely, let me talk about this. So if you're in pain for your past workout, I'm in pain from a workout I did on Wednesday. And uh, I still have very sore legs. So instead of doing leg day today, which would be the next to my progression, or even having a rest day waiting till tomorrow, decided to do a hit day instead, which works legs a little bit, but it's a lot more about cardio and endurance. Uh, with regards to, um, whew, with regards to uh, training when sore, I would say, yeah, if you're, if you're feeling a little sore, you should be okay. Your body will tell you if you're so sore that like you're down 30, 40, 50% on your workouts, then yeah, you need to rest more. Uh, but if you're, you know, if it's just mildly painful, yeah, push through it or pull through it. Um, so that's a great question. Yeah, that's the other thing. If you're new, uh, it does change things. Nanny Plum, let me go back up and see what you were asking me. Because that was, I, I like, I want to make sure I ask everything. Uh, Big Red says, talking about the Mets. Uh, I love watching the Mets fail. They are the gong show. Um, Nanny Plum, you're looking at body scans. Suavecito, thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, I don't do music. I, I'm, I have a speaker. In fact, it's right up there. It's that black box in the top left corner. Uh, but no, I, I don't want to risk that. Um, need to find a good breakfast for cutting. So I'm actually on a cut cycle right now. Uh, it doesn't matter how many meals you eat. It matters how many calories you eat. Losing weight is as simple as calories in, calories out. However, okay, calories in, calories out is not everything. What do I mean by that? Well, whoa, <laughs> I leaned a bit too far back on the bench. Whew, that could have been bad. All right, um, calories in, calories out is a law of thermodynamics. Everything else is a law of biology. Bingo, you've gotta have enough protein in your diet, otherwise the weight you're losing will be muscle and not fat, and that's not what you're looking to do. When people say they want to lose weight, they mean, I want to lose fat. Uh, unless you are, you know, going for a movie role or maybe trying to become an endurance runner, you're not trying to lose muscle. Very few people are trying to do that. Uh, Cat bro, I will go to Houston once for Viet Cajun. That is on the bucket list. Yeah, Houston has a shocking obesity rate. And part of it is because the city is designed horrendously around the car and there's no public transit and it's not walkable at all. But the other part of it is that Houston has some of the best food in the world. Uh, you have excellent barbecue scene. You have a very good Viet Cajun scene. You have very good Cajun food, uh, particularly from the Katrina residents who left Louisiana in 2005. You have excellent Vietnamese food as well. You know, pho, banh mi. You have lots of good Chinese food. You have good Japanese food. You have a lot of good Midwestern style diners and buffets because a lot of Midwesterners have moved south to work in the oil and gas industry. You have a lot of good steakhouses. There's a whole lot more. Um, Gay Boy, 1230. I love walkable towns, so do I. Uh, it's, it's good, you, you want the gym of life. You wanna be able to walk, I, I don't know, walking just makes me feel good. And I love my little town. Now, to go anywhere outside of my town, I do have to use a car, but like to go down to the post office or, you know, they're getting a, a grocery store here in the next couple of years, I will, I will be able to walk to that. Or if I wanna walk up to Papa's Kitchen and get me a, uh, some biscuits and gravy. Um, Nanny Plum, let me rephrase. What's some good high protein breakfasts? Now we're talking. Let's move this up here. So, my general, I'm not a huge fan of breakfast foods. So that's just a personal taste thing. So in general, I tend to go with uh, more along the lines of, tilt this down a bit more, that's better. I tend to go more along the lines of uh, leftovers. However, if you enjoy breakfast foods, eggs are an excellent choice. Cheese can be a pretty good choice too, as long as you monitor the macros. Some cheeses are a lot higher fat than others. Stay away from cream cheese. Go for harder cheeses. In general, the rule of thumb is that harder cheeses will have a lot more protein and softer cheeses will have a lot more fat. So um, a spinach egg and cheddar omelet is a pretty good choice. It'll also, something like that will stick to your ribs. You will feel full for a lot longer. However, there are some good uh, heavier carb option, options. If you know you're going to be very active through the day, oatmeal is not a bad choice. My favorite go-to uh, 
is, well, see, that's the thing. I, don't, I normally don't do breakfast, too. But if you want a breakfasty type of food, and I will often have this as my lunch, uh, a tub of non-fat Greek yogurt, uh, a two-pound tub will have 450 calories and 80 grams of protein. You will be very hard-pressed to beat numbers like that. I love egg whites in particular. Y'all see, uh, y'all have earned that. I'll actually chug some after we go inside and we do our handstand push-ups. Uh, but that is uh, another option. Uh, protein powder is another good choice. Um, nuts are very high in fat. If you're bulking, they're an excellent choice, but not so much if you're cutting. Little fresh fruit is if you want something that really packs it in micro-wise. No, you're not gonna get a ton of protein from fruit, but uh, it's very good for you in terms of vitamins and minerals it's supplying to your body. And it also, hey, it's fruit. It tastes delicious. So uh, go for fruit over fruit juices. The fiber will make you feel full. Uh, what other really good options are there for breakfast? Um, breakfast meats. Okay. Cold cuts are generally pretty good. Stay away from the more processed ones. Go for oven-roasted turkey or roast beef over something like salami. However, you know, salami, if you check the, check the nutrition facts, you can find higher protein variants. Yes, uh, so I buy liquid egg whites whenever they go on sale here. Um, a dirty little secret, and this is partially why I'm going to be able to retire before I turn 30, is that I live in an extremely low cost of living area. I can find dozen and one dozen eggs for as low as $1.12 here. Yeah. One dollar and twelve cents. Um, I'm not making that up. In fact, I have the picture to prove it, and I've posted it on my Discord. Egg whites uh, are disgusting, but they are as close to pure protein as you can get. Uh, for 100 calories, you get 24 grams of protein. That is a 94% protein content. You will not find a more protein pure food. If you, I'll put it as a challenge to y'all. If you do find a more protein-packed food than that, uh, protein per calorie ratio of 0.24, if you can find something that does better than egg whites, please let me know because I would love to have some. Um, would you consider raising chickens for eggs? Um, I've thought about this. Uh, especially when egg prices were really high, you know, a couple months ago, they were four or five dollars a dozen. Uh, became a lot more economically viable to do so. Uh, I have no interest in raising chickens, but my roommate does. And uh, I've told my roommate, hey, let's see how the gardening goes this year. And if you do really well with the gardening and, you know, if, if that isn't too much of a burden for you, uh, and a year from now you still want to raise chickens, we can consider it. So um, I would be, I'm open to the idea. The one thing I don't want are roosters, because roosters are bastards. They are, they crow all the damn time. Uh, they're very ornery. They will peck you, even if you own them and like you've taken really good care of them. Uh, ro roosters are, roosters are little assholes. So uh, chickens, yes, roosters, no. You're made of 100% dad genes. Yeah, I know a lot of people tell me, oh, you sound like, you sound like you'd be a natural dad. And I'm like, that's great, but I'm 28, I'm single, and I have a whole lot of the world. Like, I've, I've basically decided to punt my 20s so I can retire early and go see the world and do stuff as a single person. So, like, the idea of settling down and having a family now, just after I've spent all of my 20s busting ass and saving, no, I'm not doing that. Do you have the yard space to raise chickens? I sure do. I got half an acre out there. I, this this property is about half an acre. They would, I would absolutely have the space for that. I could very easily put up a chicken coop. I, I would definitely have space for that. The trouble around here too is that there is a large cat, feral cat population and a feral owl population. And those chickens, if not kept uh, you know, safe at night, they'd be, they would be absolute targets for them. Um, but yeah, I could absolutely, I have plenty of space to raise chickens. Uh, I frankly, I could probably even have a goat or a sheep on my property, but I don't want one. Oh, 
Goats because they carry diseases, and sheep because they're incredibly stupid. Sheep are really dumb animals. They're, they're very cute animals, and they mean well, but they are really stupid. Uh, I mean, frankly, sheep might be dumber than chickens, and chickens are a whole lot smaller than sheep. Adding on, what can I have with egg whites? So I just chug them raw because I, uh, I do have a little bit of a masochistic streak, and I know some of my uh, server here are sadists. Uh, egg whites, you could, uh, if you're, so egg whites is a great way, like if you're making a soup or a stew or a curry, egg whites will one, thicken that soup, stew or curry, and two, add shit tons of protein. Uh, yeah, you could, you could actually, uh, Capro isn't wrong, if you mix them with flour and made cake, uh, it might not be as tasty as a full fat cake, You'd be amazed how good it is. Um, but if you're looking like to have them as a actual like breakfast food, just go with regular eggs. Uh, yeah, the yolks have a lot more fat in them, but uh, egg yolks have loads and loads of other really good nutrients and minerals in them. So uh, the reason I do liquid egg whites is just because the main the main reason is because I chug them on stream and the macros are basically I do it because that's like uh, again it's it's a little bit of a uh, it's a little bit of a, I do something horrible uh, so you guys can enjoy it and, you know, watch my, watch my suffering and whatnot. Fat isn't bad, it's just calorie dense. I would agree with that. So fat in excess is bad, but fat as a, like, fat as a normal part of your diet isn't, unless you're getting too much of it. Uh, the only fats that are bad are trans fats. Uh, trans fats are linked to a variety of maladies that you, none of which you want. This is also true. Egg whites give me some horrific gas, and my poor roommate does have to suffer for that. Who she is actually, uh, for those of you who didn't see her uh, leave earlier, she's out at Walgreens, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some abs. Ooh. Balance isn't so good. There we go. What? Uh, take it up a notch. Take the kettlebell. Small town, you serve a lot of big stores. Now, we have, okay, uh, this is a town of 1,800 people. We have a post office. We have a Dollar General, because it is the South. We have a family dollar. We have a Subway. Uh, we had a pizza joint, but that closed down. We have a little mom and pop Southern kitchen, because every small town has that. Um, we have one used car lot. No, two used car lots. We have a little general store at the edge of town. We have two stoplights, two gas stations, uh, one liquor store. And supposedly we're getting a grocery store. And my roommate who uh, works for the town is, she's been hinting to me that they're trying to get a Mexican restaurant here, which would be baller. But we'll, we'll see. That, that might take some time. I love it here, man. Look, I, again, <laughs> I am able to save 80% of my income from, li from living here. It, this town really is pretty great. And then, you know, if I ever need anything more, Augusta, Georgia's right up the road. I ain't got to go far. <sighs> you should open the restaurant? No. I'm white, I can't be cooking Mexican food. I can cook Mexican food for myself, but I cannot cook restaurant grade Mexican food. You gotta have that shit in your blood, fam. When I want, if I'm gonna go out for Mexican, I wanna go out to a place that's got like people in the back that, you know, Spanish is the language they grew up speaking. They really know what they're doing. 
my grandma was upset when they saw the second stoplight in Polson. City was getting too big for his tastes. That's funny. My town has been about the same population since when it uh, was founded in the 50s. Uh, Nanny Plum says, come to Australia. Absolutely not. Well, okay, I'll visit Australia. I would never live there um, because y'all, well, there are several reasons. One, y'all have the deadliest wildlife of any continent. You have like a thousand different species that will kill you. And then simultaneously, your gun laws are so restrictive that you can't have one to protect yourself from those species that would kill you. So what, what, what's going on there, Australia? You guys are cool. Like y'all, y'all have you know, awesome rugby players. Y'all know how to party. Y'all know how to have fun. And, 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 and then there's that. Y'all even gave the world the Ute. And the Ute is a fantastic vehicle that I really wish my countrymen here in the United States would learn to appreciate. I miss the Ute. We need to bring the El Camino back. Uh, the El Camino is to us what like the Holden Malou is, or the, the Ford Falcon Ute, to give you an idea. Is everyone swollen in your town? I wish. This town's uh, a lot older and uh, a lot uh, fatter than I am. It is the deep south. Obesity rates in this state are shocking, and frankly, they're unacceptable because South Carolina is so beautiful that, and the, the weather is so temperate the vast majority of the year, there is no excuse not to get out and enjoy it. Not to get political, but I find it crazy you have guns. Now, we can talk about that. This is an adult channel. Um, gun rights are baked into the American way of life. They are what allowed us to break free from the tyrannical despotism of this 1800, the 18th century uh, British government. That's why the gun right. That's why the gun, the right to bear arms, is in the U.S. Constitution. It's because the founding fathers thought it prudent that a citizenry be well armed to defend against a tyrannical government. Not every country worships guns like the U.S. This is true, but I just find it particularly funny that in with Australia in particular, just because there's so much deadly shit in the outback that can kill you, y'all have such tight gun laws. So I feel like. The Outback is a place you really kind of want one, you know? You got a fucking, uh, I don't know even, you got a, you know, big ass deadly snake coming at you. Put a bullet in that fucking thing. As the meme says, the fuck is a kilometer? What do I need it for? Uh, well, I personally, as my Twitch stream continues to grow, I feel as though uh, it is an important thing for me to uh, be able to exercise my Second Amendment rights if someone, God forbid, you know, the internet has crazy people on it. Uh, if some jagoff tried to dox me, find out where I lived, and, you know, do harm to me. Because I am armed, and because I tell you guys on Twitch that I'm armed, I think that provides a reasonable uh, deterrent for most people to where they'd say, okay, maybe we'll try a different streamer. Um, shooting a snake would be tough, yeah. We got water moccasins and rattlers around here. Um, I just have a shotgun for self-defense to y'all's knowledge. I can't hold, okay, come on now. I can't show all my cards, Cat Bro. Um, but yeah, this, the other, that's the other reason I wouldn't want to live in Australia. Y'all's cost of living is, it makes Canada look reasonable. How the fuck did y'all do that? Jack feels okay. Don't worry, I'm not a gun nut, okay? There are, there are people who make guns their entire identity, and I think that's a little silly. I think that's not particularly rational. But uh, yeah, Cat Bro, I, again, the, the main reason I have it uh, is because, God forbid, someone, you know, someone crazy shows up to my stream. Uh, you know, y'all have heard of parasocial relationships before, right? Someone decides to get way, like, almost, like, to a creepy level into me. Um, and then, you know, they show up here unannounced and try to, like, stalk me and shit. Nah. Nah, for that, I want self-defense. And I think, I think that's a pretty reasonable, uh, a pretty reasonable justification to own a firearm. But here's the important thing. As an American, I don't need a justification. I am entitled as a right it is my right as an American citizen to own one. 
Uh, and, and that's just, again, but I'm outside your bushes now, Ag. See, now, if you guys want to come and hang out with me, just fucking talk to me on Discord or on here, and I would love to meet up with you. I love meeting my fans in real life. But none of that fucking stalker shit. Communicate, right? A little back and forth, a little give and take. Got it? I feel like responsible gun owners shouldn't be punished for the crazy. We need better background checks. Yes, okay, so full disclosure here. Uh, when it comes to politics, I am something of a moderate. Uh, here in South Carolina, I am a registered Democrat, but the main reason I am a registered Democrat is because South Carolina, thanks to Jim Clyburn's support of the Biden campaign in 2020, got pushed up to first primary in the nation. As such, being a registered Democrat uh, in South Carolina has an outsized position of power in the same way that being a registered Republican would be in the state of Iowa. So as a result, it is practically a good idea for me to register as a Democrat, even if I have positions that are not necessarily uh, in line with the Democratic Party values. See, exactly, Capro, you're a registered Republican here in Utah because that's the other thing. It's, uh, there, there are reasons for it. There are, there are political practicalities per, that goes from state to state that one has to take into account. But yeah, it, we need red flag laws. Um, some red flag laws I'm okay with, some I'm not. It really does, the devil's in the details when it comes to red flag laws. So I'm not opposed to all of them, but uh, it, it really does depend, actually. Okay, so it is currently 79 degrees in here. That is roughly 26 degrees C, which is a lot cooler than it normally is, but uh, we're actually done in here. Uh, so we're gonna head inside. Oh, the roommate's back. Good timing. So we have guns, they're only like rifles, and they're only like hunting and shooting their private property. However, they've almost stopped hunting ducks or invasive animals altogether, which sucks. That's the other thing. Um, we have, in a lot of the United States, we have aggressive feral wild boars. The worst of these problems is uh, in the great state of Texas. Hang on, wait for the garage door to go down. So one of the biggest problems uh, in the state of Texas, which is what I would call my home state, currently live in South Carolina, but, oh, by the way, important side note, you may notice that the, let me try and even it out here. There we go. You may notice that the American flag is ever so slightly taller than the South Carolina flag there. It's not misaligned, that is done on purpose. You are supposed to hang the American flag above any state flag, and I take that very seriously. I do believe in states' rights, but states uh, are part of our magnificent union and should be subject to the laws of that union. America first. Um, but yeah, we have boar in much of the deep south, but particularly in Texas, uh, and they damage crops, and they can spread diseases. So the state of Texas actively encourages hunters to hunt the boar as much as possible. The same thing occurs with deer. Uh, it's a good way to manage population control. If you don't hunt deer, deer can oftentimes overpopulate and then a lot of them will starve to death because there's not enough resources to go around. So instead of having deer starve to death, it's a lot more efficient for there to be a culling of the population. And if you can cull the population, you're then at least giving hunters valuable deer meat, which can be turned into delicious things like venison. Boars are, boars are some bastards, but boar, boar sausage can be quite good. So I'm gonna head in. Mm -hmm. All right, did you lock up? Um, I don't think I locked it now. Okay, well. If I, if I did, then my bad. I'm gonna go in. That's why they reintroduced wolves into Yellowstone, yes. Well, and exactly, wolves were originally there, I think. Got to balance out predator and prey. Right, and humans, we are, in a natural sense, we are predators. We are at the top of the food chain. Um, are school shootings as common as I hear, or are they over-exaggerated? The media has a tendency to blow every little event up here in the United States, but school shootings are far more common than they ought to be. Uh, the United States is not as violent a place as the media makes out. Remember, the media has an, it's, so it's a little bit of both. The media has an incentive to um, sensationalize any kind of news because that's what gets eyeballs. That's just basic journalism uh, 101, frankly. Um, 
one reason we overpopulate. We don't have many predators who can take us out. Right. Uh, this is why I'm a fan of getting rid of some safety regulations. We need to embrace Darwin Awards a little bit more. Look, if you're going, we don't need laws, okay, that say don't pet the buffalo at Yellowstone. If you're stupid enough to go pet the buffalo at Yellowstone and you get gored, that's nature's way of taking the idiots out of the population, okay? Don't go fucking touch the buffalo. This should not be something anyone has to explain. There, there, there doesn't need to be a law to prevent stupidity. If stupidity like that happens, just, just let it happen. If you want to go, you know, live with the bears and then, or wolverines, you know, up in Alaska or some shit, and then the bear or wolverine gets hungry and decides to eat you one day, you won a Darwin Award. Congratulations. Uh, it, it, not everything needs to be legislated. Fuck around and find, exactly. Fuck around and find out is a useful principle. So let me go ahead, y'all have our uh, handstand push-ups. So let me go ahead and put my headphones up and then we'll do some handstand push-ups. But first, um, actually, yeah, I'm gonna get a little water. But oh yes, bison meat, buffalo meat is very tasty and much more environmentally friendly than cattle. And healthier. And yeah, healthier. Uh, buffalo meat has the same amount of, uh, I think it's omega-3s as salmon, which is really good for you. It's good for your heart, I think. Um, I would love to see uh, more bison farming take place, but unfortunately, uh, the American bison is not as domesticated as any form of American, other American bovid, like, you know, a cow, like a Hereford or a Longhorn or something like that. So it's an inherently more dangerous proposition. However, it's not impossible. You can tame a buffalo. Uh, and Again, buffalo meat is really, really tasty. Remember, the American Indian tribes that populated North America, you know, up into the 1800s, uh, they lived off of basically bison and whatever wild, you know, grains or berries they could find. That, that was what nature provided them. Uh, and it's not to say that, you know, the American Indians of that era lived... Uh, easy and peaceful lives. They very much didn't. Life on the frontier was just as hard for them as for any other hunter-gatherer tribe, you know, in any other part of the world. But uh, the fact that a lot of them were able to survive and thrive and create societies tells you how good uh, a source of nutrients the buffalo was um, and how shocking and disgusting it was that American hunters in the 1800s nearly made the species go extinct and why one of my favorite politicians of all time was Theodore Roosevelt because he is the grandfather of the, him and John Muir uh, were, you know, sort of the, the grandfathers of the American conservation movement, which I think really is our greatest resources are, you know, places like Yellowstone, places like Glacier National, places like, uh, you know, down here in South Carolina, we have the Congaree. Uh, they're valuable, the Everglades in Florida, they're valuable ecosystems that it is our responsibility to preserve for future generations. I believe that very strongly. What are my thoughts on FDR? Um, actually, now, it may come as a surprise to y'all because I am somewhat more pro-capitalist, but I actually like FDR a lot. I think not everything he did was perfect, but you have to put his actions in the context of the time. In the mid-1930s, capitalism was in a crisis mode. Capitalism, you know, more democratic and liberal governments uh, that were pro-capitalist, like Weimar Germany, uh, and were, were falling to fascist leaders. Moreover, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you had the, the gaining threat of communism with an increasingly Stalinist and increasingly tyrannical Soviet Union. Uh, if you're an unironic tanky who thinks Stalin was a good leader, you probably aren't meant to hang around this channel. You're not going to like what I say. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm very happy. I love having people with dissenting opinions. I love listening and learning from other perspectives. But uh, I think, in general, the Franklin Roosevelt administration did an excellent job of keeping the American system, modifying it in some ways that it needed, but keeping it working and keeping it away from the two... Uh, much greater demons of communism and fascism. So uh, I will say, again, not everything was perfect. Obviously, the Japanese internment camps were a giant mistake and based on racism. But uh, in general, uh, the Roosevelt administration, the United States was a far stronger and better place in 1945 than it was in 1933. Uh, and Franklin Roosevelt should be given a lot of credit for that. Wish we had an FDR now. Uh... So here's, there, there are some reasons, yes and no. 
Um, I find it funny you say we have a lot of dangerous animals. It's Australia. That's what y'all are like known for. Is roommate playing Terraria? Uh, no, she's playing the, the Blinding of Isaac, which is, I swear to God, the most disturbing, creepy ass. It's like, it's like, what if we took a creepypasta and merged it with Zelda and made a game out of it? And I really don't understand the appeal. Ugh. Um, here in Kentucky, we have the Daniel Boone. Yes, the Daniel Boone National Forest. Oh, and the Appalachians. Go to the Great Smoky Mountains. Go to West Virginia, the New River Gorge. Uh, go up into Pennsylvania. Go into upstate New York. It's beautiful. The southern tier. It's lovely. I think the natural beauty of the United States. I think the, there's a, I think the name for uh, the United States in Mandarin is, I think it's Megwo. Uh, and I, I'm probably butchering that. But it stands for beautiful land. Uh, and I don't know who came up with that term in China, but... I think it's very poetic. Uh, the, the Chinese have a very good way of simplifying concepts in their language. And Hanji is a mind-blowing way to record language in and of itself. Uh, but I always, I always think of that that makes me smile because that's, I think, the best part about the United States is the land that actually is the United States. I mean, it depends where you live. Some places are more dangerous than others. This is true. Um, here in the Deep South, we do have a fair population of snakes and uh, even alligators around here. So there's one other reason to own guns. Now, I'm a few miles. I could walk to the Savannah River uh, where I would probably find those snakes and gators. So I don't immediately need my guns for that. That's not why I own them. But in theory, if I wanted to go get myself some gator skin boots, just go down uh, a couple miles towards the river. Uh, what were the things you wish you knew before studying mechanical engineering? Great question. Man, some great questions today. I'm going to answer that one after we do handstand push-ups. So can I get some handstand push-up hype in chat? Let's do this. Yes, Chinese is ridiculously hard to learn. Relatively safe unless you're unlucky and come across a black, a red back or white tail spider in my area. We have the black widow and the brown recluse around here. But those two spiders, while incredibly venomous, tend to leave you alone. There's a reason the brown recluse is called the brown recluse. It's reclusive. It doesn't like to be disturbed. Uh, I'm with you, Stalin can rot whatever circle of hell he is in. Unfortunately, that's the, the biggest problem with communism, is that someone with uh, power-hungry intent will use the existing system uh, to consolidate that power and almost inevitably turn the nation into a dictatorship. All right, here we go. Handstand push-ups. Let's go. One, two, three, go. Now, I have many other criticisms about communism, but that's a big one. Here we go. Ah, no. Lost balance. Come on. Two, three, go. Oh, come on. Ah. There we go. Ah. Okay, we're dizzy now. Woo. Um. Stalin and Mao. Uh, I actually do believe Chairman Mao is the most evil man to have ever lived in terms of sheer volume of people killed. Most brutal man in terms of probably worst thing done as a percentage of population might be Pol Pot. But uh, oh, the dictator. You mean the Sasha Baron Cohen movie? I love that movie. It's so funny. Are, Yes, uh, you are HIV Aladdin. <laughs> I love that movie. It's so funny. Uh, honestly, any of the Sasha Baron Cohen movies are hilarious. Borat is funny as hell. Even the second Borat is really funny. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of sequels, but the second Borat made me laugh. Uh, the Dictator is probably my favorite of his. Um, Bruno is extremely homoerotic, but also very funny. Bruno is a very, very gay movie. <laughs> I'm not, 
I'm not really quite sure how else to describe Bruno. It's a good movie, but it is... It has to be fun, yes! <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny, is you used to only be able to apply the it has to be pointy uh, dialogue line to dictators. Now you can apply it to idiots, well not idiots, but jagoffs like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. I actually have mixed feelings about Bezos and Musk. They're they're not that dissimilar from your you know run of the mill billionaire. Ultimately, this is that. Where's my? Where did I leave my? Uh, where did I leave my blender bottle at? That was. I mean, we miss being able to poke fun of ourselves. That was great for comedy from America. Oh, for sure, Team America. Yes. Ah. Uh, no, that's the thing. Yeah, you have to. This is why I like I love uh, Monty Python so much. They make fun of everyone. I mean, like uh, one of my favorite. I think one of my favorite movies of all time is The Meaning of Life by Monty Python, and it's that was the whole point. They wanted to make offensive jokes at the expense of everyone, and that's exactly what comedy should be about. Comedy should not have really any limits at all. Okay, it's starting to get warm, so I'm gonna go ahead and close up my windows. It's already getting well into the 70s now. Oh, hey, hold up. So who uh, who here is Australian? Uh, Nancy, are you are you Australian? Because you'll appreciate this. Exactly. Yes, being able to poke fun at yourself does provide introspection. Uh, go back a few more decades. Archie Bunker would not fly today. Oh, you don't have to go back to the. You don't have to go back to the 70s to find TV that wouldn't fly today. Dude, people want to cancel Friends because everyone was white. Like, stupid. Okay, so who's Australian? If you know about the sniper from TF2 who is, the joke is he's the Australian Bushman. Gerardi! Peace. No, why do I have that? Uh, I've explained this a few times before. Um... That giant piss jug, one, uh, I have a pretty small bladder, so I get up to pee a lot, and it disturbs my sleep less if I can just roll over on the side of my bed and just piss into a jug. The other reason is because uh, if you dilute that and then throw it on your compost pile, you can make compost a lot faster because it's a lot higher in nitrogen quant uh, quantity. The other thing I wanted to show y'all is I got these bitchin' new boots. Texas forever, Billy. Come on, how great are these? Texas as fuck. And by the way, Australians, I'm convinced of this. Y'all are just British Texans. <laughs> oh yeah, you already know. I would cancel Friends because it sucks when I don't want to get hit with a latte from Monica. That's true, if you were gonna go with a 90s sitcom, I feel like Frasier was so much funnier anyway. Frasier was dry humor, but I think Kelsey Grammer is one of the funniest actors, like, he, I love him as Sideshow Bob, he is, <laughs> oh, hold up, hold up, I can do the Australian, I've got the Australian Bushman's hat, too, hang on. Ah, piss. Snipens, good job, mate. I'm sorry. Had to do it a little bit. I don't, I don't do accents very well. Every American thinks they can do accents well and can't. Seinfeld. I don't like Seinfeld. It's, it's okay, I guess. Eh. I didn't care for Friends either. I'll tell you what, you know what show I really liked? Um, I was a fan of How I Met Your Mother. I thought How I Met Your Mother was hilarious. And I love that like they were able... I think one of the best like womanizer characters on TV ever was Barney Stinson, and it was played by Neil Patrick Harris, who is uh, very, very gay. Like, I love that a gay guy... He played that role so... Da I dropped the blinds. I'll fix that later. I love that a gay guy played that role. It just makes me happy. How I Met Your Mother's funny. Um, that's, that's one of my favorites. Uh, one of my favorite sitcoms growing up, because I lived in a military family, and this is what was on the TV, was M.A.S.H. M.A.S.H. is, it's, 
dark humor, uh, you know, because it's MASH is a show about the Korean War, which is an allegory for the Vietnam War because it was made in the 70s. Uh, not to mention The Hangover was funny. After, you know, funny enough, I never really got into I didn't like The Hangover. <laughs> Seinfeld gave us Festivus and a great you blew at me. That's true. Yeah, MASH is one of my all-time favorites. My favorite show from the 90s, though, unquestionably is King of the Hill. Uh, if you live, if you have ever lived in Texas, you know just how real King of the Hill is. King of the Hill and Friday Night Lights are basically documentaries. They do not... There's a, one of my favorite scenes, this is in 2002, when the Houston Texans were announced as the 32nd NFL football team. There was a, a line in King of the Hill. The stream's going well, King Nick, good to see you. Oh, let me give you the double fist bump with the ring. Uh, the... King of the Hill in 2002 when the Texans were a new NFL franchise coming out uh, they said uh, one of the characters I think it was Bill says well the Texans are in the AFC and the Cowboys are in the NFC so why can't we root from them both maybe they'll even root and then I think Dale says maybe they'll even make it to the Super Bowl and Hank says uh, an all Texas Super Bowl thy will be done and I that is the most, I just, I love little details like that. Uh, King of the Hill is fantastic, is where I'm going with that. King of the Hill is one of the greatest shows ever on television. And frankly, one of the things I can't stand about modern television, uh, and Homer Simpson was the pioneer, really Archie Bunker was the pioneer for this, but Homer Simpson took it into overdrive, is the trope of the stupid father and the smart wife. And what I love about King of the Hill is it flipped that trope. Uh, Hank Hill was one of the wisest characters on TV, and I don't think there are enough good male role models on modern TV shows. Uh, unfortunately, especially due to high divorce rates, you know, a lot of kids end up looking to media for male influences, male role models. Uh, and so if that's the case, we need fewer Homer Simpsons, fewer Randy Marshes, fewer Peter Griffins, and uh, more Hank Hills. Gotta go, it's midnight over here. Good to meet you. I'll hopefully catch you again soon. Here, uh, Nancy Plum, or sorry, Nanny Plum, uh, take this link and prosper. If you want to hang out off hours, the Discord's where it's at. Yeah, I, I am a big fan of King of the Hill. Homer wasn't smart, but he loved his family. That's true. And as, well, The Simpsons should have ended in the late 90s. Uh, it went on. It's still going on for way too long. But I have a special axe to grind against The Simpsons because I'm a nuclear worker. Uh, I do not take very kindly to being called Homer Simpson. Uh, that's, it's kind of a slap in the face. It's, it's pretty insulting. I mean, I get people mean it jokingly, but, you know... Imagine, again, imagine if you were a brewer and people just compared you to Peter Griffin all the time because Peter Griffin works on a brewery in that show. You'd get kind of insulted by that. Not to mention, of course, Matt Groening has done more damage to nuclear power's reputation than almost any other person uh, on this planet and as such has actually contributed to climate change because nuclear power is far less popular in the United States than it should be. Uh, to put it mildly, okay, nuclear waste is not this mysterious green goo that is held in rusting out razor-thin barrels. Nuclear waste is predominantly spent fuel rods that are placed in water and then stored in dry casks. Uh, I can get into the details of that because that's actually part of knowledge that I've needed for, you know, where I work. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on uh, the nuclear industry, but uh, to put it mildly, I have a serious bone to pick with the Simpsons about that. SWC, hey Rodzilla, thank you very much for the follow. I do appreciate that. Let's knock down these egg whites. This is disgusting, but again, it's for the macros. Two, three, four. Oh, yuck. All right, that was horrendous. So let's wash it out with some protein powder. But yeah, uh, am I very tall? I am six foot three inches, which is roughly 190 centimeters.
But yeah, if y'all are wondering what I did for a living and why I'm able to do this, this financially independent, being able to retire before I'm 30 thing has nothing to do with my Twitch show. I do this because I like helping people. In fact, you'll notice that there are basically no ads on my stream. I run the minimum amount I'm allowed to uh, on Twitch. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because I I'm not in this for the money. I don't care about how many ads are on my stream. In fact, uh, I, I actively dislike the ads because they break up the flow of conversation uh, and that to me reduces stream quality. So uh, for me, my day job is going to get me to this point. Uh, and I, I get paid well, but not excessively so, especially for my credentials. Uh, but yeah, I'm a nuclear worker. Uh, I can tell you a lot about what I do for a living. Um, well, okay, I can tell you some about what I do for a living, but I would absolutely encourage work in the nuclear industry if asked about it. Uh, we need more bright young men and women in this industry because a lot of the knowledge base, uh, you know, graduated college before Three Mile Island happened. And the American public got really fucking misled by a bunch of <laughs> idiots and ne'er-do-wells, idiots on the left and ne'er-do-wells on the right, uh, that had agendas to put a hatchet in the back of clean, safe nuclear energy in the United States. But that's a different, that's a different story. The, the point is that, um, yeah. You like certain, do you like certain home products? Uh, you'll have to be more specific about that. If you're asking a more explicit or sexual question, ask it on my Discord. Unfortunately, uh, I can't answer stuff that breaks Twitch terms of service. Uh, I'm a nuclear what? So I'm a nuclear engineer. Uh, I do work out at a nuclear site. So I actually, I don't work at a nuclear power plant. There are two sections uh, of the nuclear industry and I do not work in the power generation section. You can figure out what the other uh, section is. It's not something that I am super happy about uh, on an ethical perspective, but you gotta do what it takes to earn a paycheck. So, you know, that's also part of the reason I'm looking to retire early. I still very much do believe in nuclear energy's promise. It is, in fact, nuclear energy is the only way we will become an interplanetary species, which is something I believe we all should hope to strive for. Uh, thorium reactors are very intriguing. The uh, Indians, uh, dots not feathers, uh, the nation of India uh, has done a lot of hard work to try and get that going because India burns mostly coal and has to import energy for its uh, power sources. However, India has lots of large natural thorium resources, particularly on their side of the Himalayas. Uh, so it would make a lot of sense. Uh, it would allow India to become massively reduce its energy import needs. Uh, it would also help Indian air quality, which is pretty atrocious. It's most Indian cities are on the top, you know, 10 to 50 of worst polluted cities in, in the world. Um, oh, okay. Like, do you like certain cleaning products or daily use products? Uh, soap, towels, sorry, I'm getting some ice, stuff like that. That's a good question. Uh, I typically don't very much care for, like if it's a household ob object, I'll just get whatever's on sale at Aldi or at Costco. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't go and hunt down specific brands for the most part. Um, yeah, thorium is more prevalent. Uh, the, yeah, the Indians are really trying to, they're going more in on thorium uh, than we are here in the West. And uh, hey, more power to them. I really like the SMR design uh, because in the United States, the bulk of the, the biggest source of uh, American energy right now is natural gas. The best part about natural gas turbines is that you can peak them, which means you can turn them on and turn them off very quickly to meet demand. A small modular nuclear reactor, unlike a conventional you know, pressurized water reactor, boiling water reactor, uh, or a Gen 3 reactor like the Westinghouse AP1000, a small modular reactor is a lot easier to bring on and offline as necessary uh, to meet peak power demand. And I think that's going to be an important thing going forward, especially as we continue to add less reliable sources of power generation to the grid, predominantly wind and solar. So. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on SMRs. Bill Gates is putting a lot of money into that. I believe the company's called TerraPower. New Scale is another one that's coming out with the design. The real problem is that a lot of these 
new designs are in regulatory limbo because the NRC is extremely incompetent at what it does. It is, the NRC is unbelievably risk averse. It uses something, uh, a principle of safety called ALARA, which is <laughs> as low as reasonably uh, achievable, which is actually a principle I have to use in my job, and it is stupid. Um, ALARA is a patently stupid way to measure radiation because as low as reasonably achievable, well, it's already a bad goal because what do you define as reasonable? Does reasonable mean the same amount as an x-ray? Does it mean the same amount as you get from, you know, living next to a coal-fired power plant? Does it mean the same amount you get uh, from a flight, you know, uh, 50 flights a year if you were a frequent business traveler, 200 flights a year if you were a pilot? What, what, what is reasonable, right? Uh, is it the lowest scientifically provable threshold uh, of an annual dosage that is linked to cancer? Uh, you know, within a uh, you know ninety five percent confidence interval, what is reasonable? Well, the NRC likes to change that definition to make it as tight as possible. Um, so I have a lot of really negative things to say about nuclear regulatory agencies in the United States. Uh, we are we're very very fond of. This is what happens when you let, frankly, lawyers run run everything, and you don't let engineers run things. Uh, every power source has a risk, but here's the thing, okay? You can take those risks of radiation and say, okay, well, those are pretty bad. Let's compare them to the known risks of higher greenhouse gas emissions, worse results of climate change, and all the damage thereof caused by climate change by continuing to rely on natural gas, or... The mining results, uh, the mining damage done to the environment to mine the materials necessary to put up photovoltaic solar panels. Every energy source has a downside. <laughs> Every single one. All of them. So it's about weighing the pros and cons. And the U.S. safety standard for nuclear industry is the gold standard of the world. No nuclear industry in the entire world is as safe as the American one but we take it too far. Uh, we, what I would call it is, uh, the American nuclear industry, I would call our attitude safety at the expense of common sense. And it's a big part of why uh, routinely nuclear plants in the United States go over budget and over schedule because the regulatory, if the, if the regulatory burden applied to the U.S. nuclear industry were applied to any other industry in the United States, that industry would cease to exist. I get people who come up to me from the healthcare industry and tell me about how bad the regulatory burden is. Uh, me, and my other nuke, my, me and my other nuke buddies, we just start busting out laughing. We're like, you have no idea how bad it is. It's, it's, it cannot be compared. There really is no other, there is no other industry for which the regulatory burden is this obscene. It just blows my mind because compared to the amount of damage done to the environment and to the health of the people who work there and live near them by the fossil fuel industry, the nuclear industry has just been demonized. It's, it's, <sighs> I could go on and on and on about this topic, as you guys can tell. Confidence interval is a whole discussion in and of itself. Exactly. Nothing is certain. Everything is a, a probability or statistical de determination. You can't, right, it's the Pareto principle. You cannot make anything 100% safe, right? If you demanded 100% safety, you would never, ever leave your house for the rest of your days. You'd stay in on lockdown, except for that that would be a really bad thing to do for your mental and physical well-being. You would lose the social connections that are so valuable uh, from going outside and meeting people, even though you are taking an inherent risk of, you know, a drunk driver hitting you, for instance, but those, that is seen as an acceptable risk by society. But for some reason, uh, human, well, okay, not for some reason. I know what the reason is. Uh, but because of decades worth of negative propaganda, both from environmentalist groups on the left who turned out to be the idiots, the useful idiots for the fossil fuel industry on the right, uh, the American nuclear or the American public drastically over exaggerates uh, the risks of nuclear power. Who wants to make, who wants to make porn on par with nuclear regulation? Oh, Utah wants to make porn on par with nuclear regulation. Let the actuaries decide. 
Jesus Christ. Um, Utah, that's a certified Mormon moment right there. Um, I think the only response I can give to that is uh, from the great South Park episode. I would call that response, dum 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 dum. Hey, all right, we got a follower from IDF05. This is just a protein shake. We've already done our workout today. We'll hit our abs over there. Uh, we're gonna do Q and A, and then that's gonna kind of be it. Tomorrow's our rest day. We will play old school RuneScape. In fact, I could play some of that today, but unfortunately, I don't have the capture card yet. Uh, Catbro very graciously has decided to sell me one of the ones he wasn't using. So in the future, uh, we will be able to swap from you know a stream like this directly over and play RuneScape. But that was a shit post. I mean. What is actuarial table? What are actua actuarial tables? But a fancy version of casino, ra you know, rates and uh, betting odds. Right, it's all based on probability. But IDFO five, thank you very much for the follow. We are closing in on fourteen hundred followers, and I profoundly appreciate every single follower that comes in here makes a big difference to me. So let's get our abs going on, and then we will uh, we'll talk. Oh, by the way, check it out, y'all. I got a beer fridge now, and a wine fridge. So uh, it's just a little camping fridge, and it gets, like, the interior is like 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees C, which is perfect for, you know, storing wine or beer. Well, okay, good beer. You know, American macro lagers are supposed to be drank at, like, basically freezing. Ugh. Generic scissors, so welcome on in. Thanks for the first time chat. Uh, let's go ahead and do, yeah, let's do our abs. So we'll start with six inches, because today's an even day. Today's June the 10th. We'll do our six inches. We'll do, uh, we already did a set of Russian twists in the gym, so we'll do six inches, we'll do planks, we'll do side planks, and we'll probably do, I'm thinking crunches today. Oh. So we'll set the stopwatch to go and start. So this is really simple. Uh, six inches, all you do is you take the heels of your feet, get them six inches off the ground. That's roughly 15 centimeters for those of you who are uh, more enlightened than the United States, <laughs> frankly. Uh, and you just hold it there. You keep your knees straight. Mohawk suits me, thank you very much. I had a Texan friend let me try one of his sours. Do you mean like sour beer or like a whiskey sour? All right, 40 seconds. Hey, Dodge. Yo. Did they have what you needed? Yeah. Cool. By the way, uh, my roommate here, Dodger Zion, she's going to be doing a marathon live stream tomorrow uh, from noon to midnight. Is that correct? Noon to 10. Noon to 10. Well, 10 hour stream. Uh, we will raid her tomorrow. I'm going to start same time, 9 a.m. Eastern. And then we're going to raid her. Beer was so bad. Ooh, yeah, I'm not a fan of sour beers. That is very much not something. I can take a sip of sour beer and appreciate what is being attempted, but I feel like they taste they taste wrong to me. It tastes skunky. I don't I don't I do not care for sour beer. Come on. It's 30 seconds. So Capra, what kind of beer do you actually go for? Like, what is there a style you prefer? I'm a stout man myself. Well, okay, in the wintertime, I'm a stout man. In the summertime, I prefer something lighter. Like, uh, an APA is really nice. Or just a basic pale ale. And side planks. I've had four good days of diet in a row, so definitely looking good down here. I do like a whiskey sour, by the way. It's a good cocktail. Ooh, yes. Oh, okay, now there's an exception. I do love, I love a good Hefe, and I love, I prefer a piece of orange in mine. 
No, sorry. I like lemon and hefe, like a Rattler. Uh, I like orange in a Belgian wit beer. Uh, and I like lime in a Mexican beer. Come on, 20 seconds. I do love a good Hefeweizen though. Or a Dunkelweizen. Oh! Or a Dunkelbach. That's good stuff too. Or a Maybach. Eight, nine. <sighs> That's three. I actually did not sleep all that well. Oh, we're sore. I did not sleep all that well last night. I'm not feeling it. I may take a siesta later. There's a double block called the Wasatch Devastator that I love. Well, Mexican beers are Mexican beers are good for the beach. Um, I'll do. Yo. Yeah, I do love a good Hefe. So I think Hefe stands for uh, specifically an unfiltered wheat ale. Um, I can't, you know, obviously there are good, real, like German Hefe's that are a lot smaller, and there are good American Hefe's that are like microbrew. But I will say Francis Gunner is one of my favorites because it's, I feel like Francis Gunner is sort of. It's, it's like, it's, it's not the gold standard per se, but it's like an example of a really nice Hefe. Hefe. That, that's actually good. I didn't know. I saw this Hefe. All right. Well, cool. You learn something new every day. But yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as good uh, Hefe Weizen or Hefe Weizen or however the hell you say it, um, Francis Gunner is one of my favorites. I can find it like you can find that at most every like nicer purveyor of beer stores like you usually can't find that in a gas station but it's pretty solid i like that you really you do get a nice little ring of like unfiltered uh wheat particles at the bottom i like that <sighs> ah, that fan feels nice okay so now we've reached the q a section of the stream before we go any further i gotta take a leak So I will say yesterday, um, I had the distinct pleasure of throwing in some mosquito bait into my Dyna traps. I noticed this morning when I was walking outside, there were not as many mosquitoes. So I think I may have cracked the code here because those Dyna traps were sucking in all sorts of bugs. Uh, but I think the mosquito bait, when I opened it, it was it smelled powerful. It smelled like me, basically. Like it smelled like... Uh, like me when I've sweated a lot, like me after that hit workout, frankly, probably me right now. Uh, it smelled very strongly of human sweat. I looked in the ingredients. Uh, I'll even show you guys. I have a second packet here that I will use. Um, the ingredient is it's 35% pure lactic acid, which is what you are sweating. Uh, this is me asserting dominance. Yes, this is also me being environmentally friendly. So 
This is urine. I will dilute it. I will throw it into my compost pile uh, as a way to boost the nitrogen content and get the brown compost to break down faster. Also because I can make Gerardi jokes with it and TF2 is hilarious. There we go. <sighs> Bill Gates hates the mosquito. That's the thing. A lot of people love to hate on the current crop of billionaires, including Bill Gates and Elon Musk. <sighs> but compared to guys like the Koch brothers, or God, going further back, you know, Rockefeller and uh, JP Morgan and guys like that, eh, Bill Gates ain't so bad. I, lo I love listening to some of the, the more ridiculous conspiracy theories about Bill Gates and uh, the Illuminati and other sorts of nonsense like that. But uh, uh, Bill Gates, again, he is plowing pretty much all of his fortunes into helping end malaria, which is really, you want to talk about truly helping the poorest of the poor on this planet? Getting rid of malaria is a huge undertaking, and it is, that is a noble cause. I, again, you can hate Bill Gates for any number of reasons, but that is a noble thing to do. Uh, objectively, that is helping millions of people. Uh, and again, it's getting rid of one of the worst scourges on this planet. Malaria is an awful disease. Well, another one that blows my mind is, I, I think, I forget which billionaire, and I, I don't like sucking off billionaires, but, you know, credit where it's due. Like, as a person, I am objectively not doing that much compared to Bill Gates to help humanity. And I don't know if I would do any better uh, with a fortune like that than he is doing. I'd like to think I would. I would certainly try my best to, but it's it's very easy uh it, it's it's very easy it's like criticizing the decisions a professional basketball player is making from the sidelines you know or being an armchair quarterback uh it's it's, it's very very easy uh to judge others based on their situation so i'll give a lot of i'll give a lot of credit to guys like bill gates and warren buffett too uh whom bill gates has gone and convinced to donate most of his fortunes to those same causes um Elon is a little bit more of a mixed bag. I love the fact that Elon bought Twitter, but not because I think Elon is doing a good job with Twitter. In fact, it's the opposite. I think Twitter was a bad idea, and the faster Twitter gets ruined, the better off humanity will be. Elon is doing a bad job running Twitter. So Elon buying Twitter makes Twitter less popular, and makes Elon poor, so this seems like a win-win. I don't understand the people who are unhappy that Elon bought Twitter. Like, those are people who really must have liked Twitter before Elon bought it. It's like, who wanted that? Twitter sucks. Twitter is so, it's such a reductionist platform. You can't have nuance and coherent uh, thoughts and ideas when you're limited to 200 characters. It just doesn't work. It's just sound bites and ratios, and that doesn't help anyone. Not all, okay, so social media can be good, uh, can be bad. What we're doing right here, I would like to think this is good. Uh, I, we're having, you know, I'm trying to give good advice, trying to, you know, talk to you guys about what I'm doing, what I'm hoping to do. Um, and learn from you guys as well. A lot of you, you guys will tell me things like you, y'all will form check me while I'm lifting or give me new things to try in the gym or ask me about, you know, questions about investments. And it's a good positive, uh, give and take that would Twitch not exist. I wouldn't have that option. The same with discord. Um, people don't usually mix. Well, again, I think it's, I think it's which platforms are you using? I think Certain platforms are better designed to help people of different backgrounds and beliefs mix. Twitch and Discord, I think, are pretty good for this. Um, Reddit is less good for it, but Reddit, if you can use Reddit properly, it's not bad. The general, the really big subreddits are garbage most of the time. The niche subreddits, if you have a hobby that is very much, a, it's a smaller community, uh, and you're looking for detailed information on a topic, it is hard to beat how useful a niche subreddit can be half the time. So credit where it's due to Reddit on that one. Um, but a lot of like the bigger Reddit subs are, ugh, 
no better than Facebook at this point. Facebook is another, originally it was a good idea. Um, actually, I can't even say that really. Uh, you'd be better off just texting people and having group chats with the people you actually care about. Because really, how many other people's Facebook accounts do you spend time looking at? No more than five or 10. Well, you could just, you know, have a group chat with all of those people, which I think Discord facilitates a lot better than Facebook, speaking of. Um, Twitter, I've already covered Twitter is ass. Instagram is the same thing. Uh, it, it, Instagram is pretty toxic. Uh, there's a reason I don't have one. A lot of people are asking me to get one. One, I don't want one because I don't like Zuckerberg at all. I respect him because he actually is trying to get himself in good shape. He went and completed a Murph workout, like the CrossFit Murph workout. That shit's pretty baller. But uh, Instagram is owned by Facebook and, or I guess it's called Meta now, which is an even dumber thing that Zuck has done. But um, Facebook is an incredible waste of time, yeah. Uh, and it's not even all that popular amongst people under age like 30 anymore. I never had a Facebook, but most people in my generation, by the time like 2012 came around, most people were like, ew, Facebook. Um, but like, if you want to connect with friends and family, there are better options. And then Instagram is, I think Instagram is uh, much more toxic for women than for men. For the most part, the worst thing to come out of Instagram is women who will put up you know, really, really like rich women, uh, or, you know, people who have these really privileged lifestyles that will post just endless content about how perfect their life is and how manicured everything is or airbrushed photos and set unrealistic expectations. I think in general that affects women more than it affects men. The Kardashians is a great example. Um, yeah. So I, I, I prefer if I have to pick two. So I think so again, social media can be good and it can be bad. It's a double-edged sword, just like the internet. Um, but I think there are better platforms and worse platforms. Uh, Twitter is absolutely at the bottom of the list, along with all of the pathetic alt-right equivalents. Like, come on, man. Nobody's using Gab. Nobody's using Parler. Those are just kind of sad. Um, I think it's called Rush. Not Rush. Uh, Rumble. Rumble. I think is an alternative to YouTube. I think that's not a bad idea uh, just because I think YouTube has too much power. Um, I prefer, if given the choice, I like Curiosity Stream and Nebula personally. That's a really good way to support content creators that you like that also go on YouTube. Nebula is a nice extra bonus, but Curiosity Stream just has lots of really good documentaries. So, uh, To me, it's either pick up the phone and talk to your friends or go and do things with your friends. Mm. So the problem is me, like I've moved so many different places in my life that it would be impossible to like actually do that in a way that makes sense. Discord is really nice because one, I can, you know, have those conversations with everyone. Um, I also do Snapchat, but Snap my Snapchat's just for my friends and family. I don't, I don't, that you guys won't ever get that. Sorry. Um, uh, I need an alternative to Reddit soon. Yeah, Reddit's going down the tubes. Frankly, good riddance. Again, I, I will feel bad for all the small subreddits, but there are going to be individual forums for most of those passions. So you'll just have to do a little bit more hunting down for the right community for that. Discord may end up being uh, that, that route. Um, but another reason I really like Discord uh, as a social media platform is, for instance, next weekend, I'm going to North Myrtle Beach. And if any of y'all want to come hang out with me, be my guest, you know, uh, come chill. I would love to have you. In fact, I think there were a couple guys I met up at Burlington last week. Uh, one of whom lives in Wilmington that said he might be interested in hanging out with me. So may just go do that. It's a, I have found that I've met a ton of great people off of discord. And I know a lot of people are like, you would meet people that you've talked to in discord in real life. Hell yeah. Why wouldn't I? Same thing with Twitch. I love my community here. You know, Every so often you get a nutter, but like the vast majority of people that hang out in my community, either on Discord or here on Twitch, are awesome, and I love talking to them. You guys in particular, you know what? Yeah. Mm. Speaking of, Capro, I need to... I talked about this earlier. Um, I need to ask you about 
maybe becoming a mod or becoming an admin on my on my channel just because i you're always in here you're always providing good conversation you always have positive things to say i respect your opinions even when i don't agree with them um and i don't know i just like you in general so i feel like i feel like you'd be a pretty good admin fit i don't know i'll probably talk with my other admins about that hey gur the giant welcome welcome so my friend, best friends came from hanging out with them online for a while on Discord before hanging out with them I IRL. Um, welcome. Thanks for the first time chat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of stretching and then see what I would like to do. And I will be able to do this in the future because this was kind of a short, it was a short workout today because we, uh, it was a sort of a hit workout. Hit workouts, if you're doing a hit workout for an hour, uh, you're either not going hard enough or you are an absolute fucking you know, cardio god. Um, I did mine for 25 minutes, so that was more than enough. But in the future, what I'll be able to do is run a capture card, thanks to Catbro. Uh, he sold me one that was uh, at a pretty good value, and I will be able to switch to old school RuneScape, which that's what we will be doing tomorrow, by the way. Happy to be here while I'm taking care of a bit of work. Well, I know if that means you're having to work on Saturday, God bless you, man. I hope you're making that hay. Hope you're getting paid overtime. Uh, Always, always good to have new people coming in and chatting. So if you've got questions about who I am, what I do, what that thing up in the top left corner is, any of that, let me know. In the meantime, we're going to change the perspective just a touch. There we go. Oh, by the way, Severus, uh, did you see I did the war hymn yesterday? Bit of my FT job and a bit of my side hustle too. Hell yeah. See, in theory, I could call Twitch my side hustle, but I'm not gonna. Ooh, I gotta write down my macros too. Egg whites, 100, 24, 0.5, 0.5, protein. Again, I, I have it so often that I just know the numbers off the top of my head. 340, 56, 7, 16, done. So we have had 440. Plus, I had some beans, some leftover beans and chicken uh, as a pick-me-up this morning because I had caffeine, and caffeine on an empty stomach is a good way to get lightheaded. So 440 plus 225 is 665, plus 180 is 765, 845 calories. We've had 56, plus 24 is 80, plus 22 is 102, plus 22 and a half is 124 and a half grams of protein. So we're doing great. We do, we'll do a splits. this how did this get here what is that there's a piece of glass from that scale i busted one of us must have trailed it out ow yeah i just stepped on a piece of glass look at this owie yeah that did not feel good okay well i'm glad i stepped on it and it didn't go into my skin it didn't break skin it just hurt <laughs> all right uh so I don't like the lighting. Hang on, we're gonna fix that. Actually, what I need you to do is scoot up a little bit. You've accidentally pushed this back a bit. A little more, a little more. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's much better. You can actually see what I'm trying to split. There is nothing wrong, by the way, with having a side hustle. One of the things I've really uh, enjoyed listening about are the people who are taking on remote work jobs, doing their job well enough to where corporate doesn't notice, and then picking up a second job to make that fucking hay. I love that. Um, I think that's absolutely fucking baller. I think that's that should be encouraged, right? 
And the the CEOs that like to complain about this are the biggest fucking hypocrites. Because take Elon Musk, for instance. How many jobs does that guy do? He runs, he's got Tesla, SpaceX, Twitter, the boring company, uh, and much, much more. And a whole lot of CEOs absolutely love to just, you know, praise him, verbally suck him off. But when workers decide to do the same thing, the CEOs start bitching and complaining, no, you got to do all the work for my company. If you want me to work that hard for your company, pay me that well. <sighs> Fuck, I sound like a goddamn socialist again. i to wash out my whore mouth. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, I think a piece of that glass might have broken off in my foot because I, I can definitely feel it. I can feel something in there. That's not ideal. I have to go sanitize that after the stream. You dirty hippie. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just the worst about that, aren't I? You know, I'm just I'm just I'm just an evil stinky hippie. You know, all the way down for sure. This is why I love being a centrist. You get to piss on both of them. Ooh, yeah, I am actually bleeding. Uh, that's not ideal. Mm, see if I can get this on camera. That's not... Am I allowed to show blood on Twitch? Why wouldn't I? It's not that gross. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Hang on. I can't get the light on it. Ooh, yeah. A little bit of a blood stain there on the... Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, I am... I am bleeding down there. Don't worry. It's not that... It's not bleeding too hard. So I'll just wait until I'm done streaming and I'll take care of it. Just sanitize it. I got some rubbing alcohol. It'll sting, but... Um, I stepped on a piece of broken glass. Yeah, I need to sweep up and mop up in here. Um, it's just something I've neglected. I've just been busy doing other shit, so it's all right. I'll put a bandage on it. I'll clean it up um, and be good with that. It happens. Too bad. I'm sure one. I'm sure quite a few of y'all would like to be here and just do that for me. You know, take care of my foot and play the caretaker role. I know quite a few y'all. A lot of my audience is into that kind of stuff, so. Um, I got this copy back. A couple other guys around my age came by my house, uh, and they were asking me, "Is like, yo, you look great, you know, uh, can you show us some of the stuff you do for a lift? And, they're, and I'm like, okay, you want to see just as a flex? And I casually just full body press to, I think it was 215. Uh, and they're like, holy shit, dude. Uh, how'd you get to being like that? And I'm like... Here you go. Best advice I've ever received is that book. So I don't get paid to shill this book. I'm just telling you this book will get you results. You may not get 30 pounds of muscle in six weeks. You should probably get 20 to 25. If you're really new, you might get 30. Now, the diet in here is a bulk diet. So you will gain probably 40 pounds of weight. You will put on fat too. Um, the only way this workout works is if you are putting shit tons of calories in your body, but that means you get to eat basically anything you want, uh, as long as it's got enough protein in it. And that's fun. Uh, you need to drink a gallon of milk a day and I adore milk. So that's very easy for me to do. Um, milk is for bulking. Milk is like liquid Jesus. It's just milk is the best. I, I really like milk. So Milk's good shit. Strong like bull. Drink like calf. I guess that's... Is that... Is that a good way to put it? <laughs> yeah, to become strong like bull, one must drink milk like calf. Shoot. That's... I'm gonna use that for bulks in the future. Which, by the way, let's talk about the bulk and cut cycles. Uh, I'm currently on the last month of a cut cycle. Uh, I am currently I actually weighed in this morning at 211 and change. Uh, that's pounds. It's roughly 95 kilos. Um, I'd like to get down to like 206, 207. 
Um, I've been doing pretty well the last couple of days on calorie levels, so I'm going to try and continue hitting it pretty good. Uh, hopefully we can get there. I uh, weighed in, I was at 12.7% body fat this morning, which seems about accurate. That scale seems to fluctuate. Some days it'll be up at like 15, 15 and a half, which is too high. Some days it'll be down at like nine, which is too low. The kind of median is 12 to 13% right now. And looking at my body, right, okay, so if, I, if I'm standing straight, I have visible abs. If I flex, I have a visible six pack. One, two, three, four, five, six. The last two are a little hard to see, but you can make them out. You can see two distinct bumps here. I do not have an eight pack, which is the, you know, I can feel it. If I push in, I can feel uh, the crease, but it's not visibly, it, you can't see it. There's too much visceral fat there. And the lower abs is the hardest. That is, for men, the last place you will lose fat. So if you want to have like a full on eight pack, you're going to be probably around 10% body fat. And I thought about going for that. That was the original goal of this cut. But then May happened. And May, I had two beach weekends, my birthday, a weekend where I went to an all, uh, a all, exp or an all food paid baseball game. Uh, in Colombia, which was freaking dope. Credit to Dodger on that one. Um, and, you know, life just happened. So I was more in maintenance mode for that month. And, okay. I'm pretty content with where my body is, like, in terms of aesthetic. Would I like it to be stronger? Yeah. Long term, where I'd like to be is, I think, 225 pounds and slightly leaner than where I am now. So that's going to take several more bulk and cut cycles to get to that point. But I'm excited for that. Um, in general, I prefer to do my bulk cycles in the winter because when you consume lots of food, there is a uh, property, a biological property called the thermic effect of food. Uh, especially with protein, you will burn uh, a quantity of your food in digestion. This provides heat to your body uh, and as such is very useful for staying warmer in the winter. However, in the summer, especially here in the deep south, staying warmer is the last thing you want. So you're better off cutting in the summer. Plus, cutting makes you look more defined. And if you're going to the beach in the summer, which in here in South Carolina, I like to do all the time, why wouldn't you want that? So it doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to go for the, uh, for the bulk in summer. So we'll, we'll probably revisit a bulk. I'm guessing probably between late October and Thanksgiving. And then that would be, that'd be fun. Make my, make my final bulk weekend Thanksgiving. Mm. <sighs> turkey. I really like turkey. I, I, although frankly, if you, that's the thing too. I love turkey, but I just, Thanksgiving in general, is just a holiday I really love because I think gratitude is one of the most underrated traits a person can have. If you're thankful for what you have, uh, you tend to be a much happier person uh, because it, it, it forces you to look around and say, you know, my life is pretty good. Um, so for that reason, I'm a huge fan of Thanksgiving. I think the underlying concept behind it is really good. Plus, arguably, uh, one of our good... Well, one of our greatest presidents, not even arguable, one of our greatest presidents created the holiday, Abraham Lincoln. So there you go. Um, Drake56 says, I want to get toned like you so I can feel confident in front of baddies. Can you motivate me to work out? Sure thing. Uh, I would recommend the Discord because we actually have a motivator uh, role in the Discord that you can ping if you need a little bit of a boost. Um, what I can tell you is... If you want to feel confident in front of baddies, are you saying in like a self-defense sort of way? Because if you want to get, um, right, my aesthetic is, like my build aesthetic is I'm just a big enough dude to where most guys who'd want to do something like mug, like a mugger is going to look at me and say, no, there are easier targets. Uh, but if you want to feel confident in front of baddies, go learn a martial art. That's going to be way better. Um, my younger brother, uh, who is, if it's baddies meaning women, uh, by baddies, I think he, when you're saying baddies, are you talking about like in a, in a more like dating sex way? Or are you talking like a, hey, you don't, you're, you're scared of getting mugged kind of way and you don't want to be scared of being mugged anymore. Maybe, yeah, maybe we need you to clarify here. 
Uh, but if it's being mugged, uh, my brother, uh, Lab Boys TV on YouTube, love that channel, um, is he does Muay Thai. And while I can outpower him, I'm much stronger than he is. If we got in a fight, he'd probably win because he could throw a knee uh, or a roundhouse to my head. I'd be done. Uh, you're talking about dating sex way. Ah, okay. Well then, yes, this is, yeah, you're going to want to, uh, okay. Here's the funny part about this. A lot of guys start their lifting journeys with the, I want to impress women outlook. That's, that's fine. You can start out that way. At some point along the way, you will realize that weightlifting the journey becomes the destination. Weightlifting becomes something you do because you need it as a mental health thing. That's why I lift weights. I lift weights not because I want to. I do want to. I enjoy it. But I do it because I need to. It provides a stress relief. It provides a mental health boost. Every time I lift, we come back in. And Dodger, you can, you can back me up on this. You've, she'll back me up on this. If I have not lifted for a few days, I start to get a little bit... Uh, start crazy a little bit on edge but like yesterday I was just in a great mood I had gotten through a really nice pull workout even though it wasn't a, that great like I was a little bit weak um I came in and I whipped Dodger up because she was working that day um I was just in such a great mood I whipped Dodger up a kick-ass quesadilla for lunch she didn't even ask for it I just did that shit because I was like you know what I feel like I'm just in a great mood I want to make you in a great mood like it's just shit like that uh, damn good too. Right, like, but you notice, like, I'm way more upbeat. I'm much happier. I feel like on days where I've been lifting, like after I lift, I'm definitely it's just a mood boost. It's a positive mental health thing. That's partially why, uh, you know, I I very much advocate for uh, weightlifting in particular. But it doesn't have to be weightlifting. Um, but if you want to look good to impress the ladies. This is a great book to start with. This workout that's in this book is the hardest workout that I've ever done. It is unbelievably effective if you do it properly. I don't know what your current body type is. Uh, I don't know if you're skinny or if you're fat. Uh, and I would give you different advice depending on where, where you're at. Uh, if you are, you should want to look good for yourself though. Absolutely, this is true. But a lot of guys, look, I don't care what your reason is to want to go to the gym first, if it's to impress potential dating partners, if it's for your mental health, it all, if it's, you know, if it's just for wanting to look good for yourself, the long, the, the people who stick with it the best, the people who have the most results are the ones who develop a positive symbiotic relationship with the gym. For me, again, I do it because like it, I could, nobody could ever look at my body for the rest of time. And I would still do it because weightlifting makes me happy. Weightlifting provides positive mental health benefits to me. That's extremely important. It's my, it's my happy places where I vent out frustrations. It's where I can be physical, right? I can, right. There's a reason, part of one of the reasons I've called rebranded myself to bull muscle is because I've got that sort of bull temper. For the most part, I'm usually pretty cool. I can keep I can keep my cool pretty long, but you know, like everyone, stresses start to build up and they build up and irritations and frustrations and things that piss me off. Uh, and I can I can go in there, rep out some fucking full body presses we were doing earlier, right? And I can get I can get that out of my system. Um, uh, you had to stop. Oh no, Allie, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, I hope you, I hope you get better. Um, but that's, that's a, that's a big part of, of why I, of why I lift. Um, in general, uh, I'm not a woman, <laughs> so I can't tell you what most women and women are all different. You know, not all women love the same things. Some chicks go for really built chest, you know, like I'll be frank, that's probably my best feature. Some really like you know, the back, the lats. Some girls, you know, a lot of guys say curls for the girls, right? A lot of guys like the biceps, uh, or a lot of girls like the biceps too. Some really go for the glutes and the legs. You gotta, 
you got to kind of work it all until you found out what the girl you're chasing after likes. Then you can get kind of more focused on it. So I would say start with, if you're new to it, a basic upper body split. If you're a bit more experienced, perhaps a push-pull leg. Uh, I have workouts in my Discord that you can follow. They're pretty simple. You can substitute things in them depending on what access, workout equipment you have access to. Um, I was not eating enough and I crashed almost around the six month mark. Yikes. Also, a lot of you who attract are less cat gals and more cat bros. This is true. Like, my God. I had, the, you know, this is one of the things I, I never thought would really happen to me, but I've had several catfish attempts against me at this point. And it always kind of cracks me up because they're always, it's almost always a guy pretending to be a girl. And as someone who's bi, it doesn't matter what's going on underneath for me, right? Like what matters a way more is your personality and like who you are. And you know, if you're physically attractive, that's great, I guess. But like, it's not, it, that, that's just not at the top of my list of things I'm interested in, like, you know, romantically. But like, I will say, you're, you're not wrong, Capro. Like, I feel like for every one guy that like has romantic feelings, or for every one girl that has like romantic or, hey, I want to talk to this guy, I'd like to go on a date with this guy feelings with me, it's like 10 to 20 guys. The ratio is just ridiculous. I feel like that's that's the truth on almost any platform online. The the guy to girl ratio is just out of whack. Um, but I don't honestly, I don't mind that. There is there are a few things hotter than a uh, than an athletic, well toned male body. <sighs> like it's just it's a naturally attractive form. Although the same could be said for a female body in the same in the same way. Um, I don't know girls how girls don't find this attractive, but hey, maybe I'm weird. I think it's the mohawk and the mustache. I feel that's that's my theory. I feel like the mustache uh, and the mohawk in particular. Uh, I, I feel like that definitely attracts way more dudes. I like women and men. Tone bodies are just attractive. Speaking, speaking, spitting facts right there. Honestly, I, you know, it's funny. I've had the mustache for way longer than I've had the mohawk, but I really dig the mohawk and I'd, I'd sooner ditch the stash. So that's kind of, that's, that's one I never thought I'd say, but. Now we had a good, uh, we had a good private stream actually on my discord last night, uh, where you guys asked me a lot more uh, of the explicit questions you can't ask me on Twitch. Uh, so you guys, you know, that was a lot of fun. Y'all can, you know, ask me, y'all are able to sort of ask me a lot of the stuff that uh, I'm sure is on your minds, but you've never asked on here. And if you guys ever want to ask me those questions, it's what the Discord's for. Gives you guys that access. I like being open about all these things. That's why I have this financial independence ticker, ticker here. I'm very pro being open about money and talking about it because it's the only way people learn. Um, and I, I feel as though... One of, the, one of the ways to make capitalism work better as a system, and I am an ardent capitalist, is to me, the base, one of the basic tenets of capitalism is that it makes the economic assumption that consumers are rational actors. And that's unfortunately not a very accurate assumption. If you can help educate other people on how the markets work, how compound interest works, how to save your money, how to discern value, uh, you're making them more ideal consumers, more ideal actors in the marketplace, and therefore you're helping the overall market act more efficiently, which I think is a good thing. Justin NL709, thank you very much for the follow. I do appreciate it. I think we're getting close to 1400. Um, Gay Boy says, huh? <laughs> Behavioral economics destroyed that notion in the 80s. I, I, I still believe in it. It's not a perfect model, but in a lot of situations, it's a good enough model. Uh, there are, and again, there is not every uh, marketplace for a given good is a perfect market, but there are plenty that come pretty close. Uh, so, you know, there are also uh, markets for goods, things like uh, electricity. Or actually, no, electricity is not a good example. Things like water, 
sewage uh, or fire departments that it makes, they're called natural monopolies and it makes a lot more sense for that to be run uh, at a nationalized or maybe not nationalized level, but at a government level instead, perhaps. Uh, for instance, the post office uh, is, a, is a pretty decent one. Uh, or again, fire departments. I, the, the hardcore libertarians who believe in like private fire departments, no, uh, it, don't be ridiculous. Uh, even though I had to stop weightlifting, I'm still losing weight. Fit into a pair of pants that were tight a month or so ago. Brand new and they fit fantastic. Hell yeah. Way to go, Allie. I'll always, I love hearing stuff like that. That makes me really happy. Good for you. Seriously. The other thing, too, is that... Um, oh, hold up. Lab boys just finished changing the oil. I'm not going to lie. I missed the pan and st stained the fuck out of the concrete. But it's all good. Fuck this roast and fashion complex. Lamau. I assume you were changing the oil on the truck and not the Shelby. It's just going to go ahead and say my boy Lab Boys has a bitch in Mustang. Uh, it's awesome. I keep saying Discord pick is coming, but very honestly, as very soon, I just keep moving the bar. Hey, take your time. Don't do that until you're ready. Like, seriously, Allie, the fact that you're, you're losing weight, you've had your setbacks, but you're still committed to it, and you're making good progress, you're continuing to make good decisions... Warms my heart. I love hearing progress like that. So thank you for sharing. Uh, and only share what you're comfortable with. So take your time. I know, you, I know you're going to look fabulous whenever... whenever I, if you're, I'm sure you already do. But I know you're, gonna con you're just only going to look more fabulous uh, the better shape you get in. Um, yeah. Uh, Allie, Allie's pretty great. She's... Uh, She's been around for a while, so it's, it's been fun listening to your journey. Uh, you should notice the difference compared to my old pick I sent you a while ago. It'll be exciting to put them both together. Yeah, if you send me the new pick, please send me the old pick, because, like, I don't remember how long ago that was, and I don't want to go digging it up. <laughs> um, my brother had a Roush. It was so sexy. Oh, dude, the, the GT350, so that's... Can I kind of tell the backstory behind that car? Lab Boys, you cool with that? I feel like I can. I don't, I don't see why th that wouldn't be something I could do. Do a collage. Hell yeah. That's a great idea, Allie. Um, Roush Mustangs are sick, too. Saline used to do Mustangs in the 90s. Those were pretty neat. Um, I think... Okay, you don't care? So, my, my bro here, Lab Boys TV, first off... Um, go give Lab Boys a subscription on YouTube. He's got content related to this car if you're super into it. Uh, but uh, my bro, Lab Boys TV, and I, uh, our late father was a huge fan of Mustangs, you know, pretty much growing up. He was a, he was a car guy, and he's the guy who got me into cars. Uh, and my brother here into cars as well. And he in the 80s, back when you could buy one for peanuts, had a 1969 Boss 302 Mustang. And that muscle car bug bit him in the early 80s, and it stuck with him. And so after he, you know, busted ass, started raising a family, and, you know, worked his way up in the military ranks, he had enough money to buy a uh, classic Mustang. Uh, he had bought, uh, it, was an Ele it was a 68 uh, Eleanor Homage, and it was a beautiful car. And he ended up getting an offer on it. This was sort of, this was the late 2000s, like right before the recession. Someone made him a, just a ridiculous offer on it. And he took that, ended up uh, going through, it was a 69 Mach 1 and then a 70 Boss 302. And then uh, he had ended up moving to Texas. And the Boss 302s were fantastic cars. It's seriously one of the greatest cars of the muscle era. But they did not come with air conditioning. And... As a result of that, uh, they're basically undrivable for half the year in Texas. So, uh, my dad sold it, ended up buying brand new, a 2017 Shelby GT350. Wimbledon white with the blue stripes, as God intended. Uh, and it, it's a, a beautiful, fantastic car. And I remember how much... I remember, because I went down there, when he went and bought it, I was with him at the time. We went and... He drove all the way to San Antonio to test drive one, and 
he yeah eleanor was fast and furious gone well, it was gone in 60 seconds sorry not fast and furious um but he tested that shelby and he knew instantly just that's the one i want it and at this point this is uh after he had retired he'd made it all the way up to brigadier general um and so he had saved up enough money to buy it he bought it cash uh and it was it was just his favorite his favorite car it was it was sort of his dream car and I just remember all the good times we had with it and when he passed away uh, my mother kept it and sold it to um he sold it to my brother uh, he actually i was the first one to get offered it and i did not have at the time it was 2021 uh and i did not i lived at the trailer home at the, at the time and i did not have a place i did not have a parking space for it so it just didn't make sense for me to own it. Um, and I'm very happy with my Volt anyway. Uh, it's not anywhere near as sexy a car as the GT350, full disclosure. Uh, but it is sensible, it's efficient, and it's very low cost. So I like it. And it's fun. It's, it's not, it's not going to eat up the road in terms of performance, but it's quick. You know, especially because it's got all that torque at zero RPM. But uh, it's been a terrible financial. All cars are. Very, very few cars. My dad is about the only person I knew that actually ever flipped profits on cars. I know there are other people who do them, but my dad was really good at that. He made money off of the Eleanor. I think he broke even on the Mach 1, and he made money off of the Boss 302. Um, wouldn't have picked the OG white with blue, but it reminds me of him. And yeah, USAF, because it's perfect. The, that's just the quintessential Shelby color. So the original GT350s, uh, sold in 1965 and 66, you could only get them in white. Uh, that was just Carol Shelby's preferred color scheme. And in the 60s, right, it was more of a, it, it was more of a sort of a small startup business uh, with Mustangs that was more loosely affiliated with Ford. And so uh, they didn't have the same sort of resources that they do now. Now they stopped making them, might be a 100K plus car one day. That colorway holds value better, though, too, than the grabber orange or whatever. I would think that's very true because it's classic. Again, it's what the OG Shelbys of 1965 were painted. So that is that is very true. Um, Catbro says, I want a vet or an old Nissan Z. I love the C3 vets, even when they started getting into the disco era where they were, you know, giant you know almost six liter v8s producing pathetic amounts of horsepower like 150 horsepower i don't care i think the c3s looked fabulous uh with the t-tops and the those 500 or the 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 wheel flares that are really like or the wheel fender flares that are super flared out that coke bottle styling i think the c3 was unbelievably sexy um even if it was absolute crap tier 70s gm build quality and it wasn't very fast. I don't care. They looked amazing. Um, the only car maker made cool cars in the 70s. Disagree. The 70s were, the Malaise era is generally defined as 1974 to 1983 in the United States. But that doesn't mean there weren't cool cars in that era. There was just a lot of crap you had to sift through. Uh, in my opinion, Pontiac made the Trans Am cool well into the 80s. The Corvette, the C3 was always cool. I don't care uh, if the performance sucked ass. It was still beautiful. The original Toyota Celica, gorgeous car. Okay, yeah, the Mustang 2 is a shitbox. Not going to go there. But uh, you had uh, the AMC, uh, the original AMC 4x4 Eagle in the, in the late 70s, cool car. You have the CJ7 from Jeep, great car. The Scrambler, the Golden Eagle. Uh, you have uh, the big red, Ex the little red express from Dodge. Uh, you had, I think, of what other, what other good cars from that era? Oh, you have the original Civic, the little CVCC, great little thing. Uh, not fast, but very fun. Peppy got a good little five-speed shifter. You have the original uh, Mazda RX-7 rotary engine, cool little car. Uh, rotaries had their own problems, but a neat idea. You know, you had. Uh, Oh, you had, these things were unbelievably slow, but you had the, uh, the Mercedes diesels of the time, which were legendarily reliable. They're still used today in Africa as taxis. Same thing with the old Peugeot 504s and four, or sorry, 405s rather. Um, 
There are a couple other. Or no, I'm thinking, no, it's a 504. I think I got that right the first time. You had uh, some of the Mark II Jags. Uh, very, very pretty cars. Horrendously unreliable, but beautiful nonetheless. The Maserati Marac, gorgeous. Uh, the De Tomaso Pantera, lovely. The Lamborghini Countach, enough fucking said. Hey, uh, Paxpatop, Paxpahatop, I don't know how to say that, but thank you, welcome very much, thanks, or, thank you very much, welcome to the first, uh, to the stream, thank you for the first time chat. Actually, uh, we're getting a bit late here, uh, there's not a whole lot else I was gonna do today, so, I think we're going to look to raid someone. Tomorrow we'll be live at 9 a.m. for Old School RuneScape, which, if you guys want to come and play with me, you can. That's the best part about those streams. Um, let's see here. Let's see who's on Twitch. So, howdy. We've got, let's see. Ooh, I was going to say we could raid Malik, but his stream just crashed. we got Jasu. For next to Zach and Supernatural. Ooh, Seltzy or Supernatural? Ah, this is a choice I always have to make. I just end up flipping a coin. Do I have a coin over here? I thought I had a coin over here. Ah, uh, here we go. Heads for Seltzy, tails for Supernatural. Nice ring. Oh, yeah, let me explain this. So, I went to Texas A&M University, graduated the class of 2017. Uh, and the Aggie ring is like a super big thing for us. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much and welcome. First time chat, uh, Elgad. Are you just getting buff on stream? Uh, no, uh, I've been lifting for 15 years and I also lift off hours, uh, but I've, I'm happy to give advice. If you guys wanna hang out more, check out the Discord. Lots of great stuff on there. Please come hang out. So let's go ahead and do, let's flip the coin. We're gonna figure it out. Heads for Celti, tails for Super. All right. U.S. quarter. Coin is up. It is heads. We're gonna raid Celti. God, a Maya Angelou quarter. Still waiting for the fucking Wright Brothers quarter. Get it together, government. We got better people to put on our money than Maya fucking Angelou. When did you start a gym uh, or are you home workout first? Uh, I started lifting in 2008, but I really only started getting serious about getting like actually diced in 2022 in my home gym. Yo, how much money would Manscaped have to sponsor you with this shave, the stash? My Angelou is amazing though, hard disagree on that. Um, I feel like if Manscaped tossed me 10 grand, I'd take it. I'd shave the stash for 10 grand. I feel like that's I feel like that's a fair mar fair market value. What do you think? Ten grand, a little more, a little less. Because the mustache is kind of iconic at this point. I've been rocking this bad boy. This is the wild part. I've been rocking this for over two years now. No, I um, I am not a fan of Maya Angelou's work in general. Um, and if you are, hey, more power to you. But I just feel like there are better American heroes to put on our money. I'm mostly just salty because as an engineer, the Wright brothers were absolute uh, pioneers of an entire industry and we don't celebrate them enough. Um, it is 1146 AM. I live here in the East Coast of the United States. Cool mustache, no homo. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, we have, this is, it is Pride Month. Uh, I don't really go super hard into the, the whole rainbow stuff, but like, if you're gay, you're welcome here. This is no problems with it. Yeah, Tubman's a lot. See, I, I think Harriet Tubman uh, is much more worthy of being put on money than Maya Angelou is by quite a long way, I, I might add. Hell, I'd have been cool with uh, replacing Andrew Jackson with Harriet Tubman. I'm fine with that. So Harriet Tubman, that was some baller-ass shit. Getting slaves out of the Deep South? Fuck yeah, that's really cool. Nice stash, all the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, El God, that means, okay, so if you, it's 1046 where you're at, that means it is, you live in the, which is 1046 p.m., that means you are in, uh, Bangkok, somewhere around that Southeast Asia sort of area, China perhaps? 
Nee. Um, maybe Indonesia, Singapore. Um, yeah, no, I would, I would absolutely put Tubman on the 20. I'd be cool with that. I would really love to put the Wright brothers on the 20 because again, I'm an engineer. So I love your sexy chest. Yeah. A lot of people, I would say my chest is my best part for sure. I'm in Indonesia. Yeah. This thing's got world time on it. So I was cheating, but you know. Uh, itchy nurse, that's good to see. Itchy, you need to hang out on the Discord more, uh, cause you would have enjoyed last night's, uh, you would have enjoyed last night's private session. I feel like, just my opinion. Uh, do we have any other final questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna probably look to raid someone, and then we will be back on air tomorrow morning. That's 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which would be, uh, 8 p.m. Your time, El God. Also, uh. You missed it? Well, that's okay. There will be more, but you got to get on the Discord. Get the roll for it. I'm telling you. All right, so we roll, We flipped heads, uh, and we went with... Uh, so it's going to be Selty. So he'll load up his stream, wait for the ads to go through. So if there's anything else you all have questions for, now's the chance to ask. Otherwise, we're going to get ready to raid. Um, hey, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that, all God. Here, uh, Itchy Nurse, make it easy for you. There you go. Take that link and run with it. <sighs> All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and raid Seltzy. Um, Seltzy's pretty great. He does a lot of hit stuff. So if you're into uh, if you're into high intensity intervals training, he's got really great endurance. So definitely uh, highly recommend giving him a follow as well. He's got great advice, uh, and he is a huge fan of helping out the rest of the people in the Twitch fitness community. I've got a lot of other Twitch streamers I can recommend, but Celty's at the top of the list. He's a great guy. We're gonna go ahead and raid Celty. All right. And then uh, we are going to uh, be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be playing old school RuneScape because tomorrow's my rest day. As always, uh, make good decisions, y'all. Those good decisions form habits. Those habits form values. Those values forms an ethos. That ethos can be the guide star through the rough waters of life. Come in for the hug. Hmm. And we will raid.